meeting to order. Yeah. The, uh, I'd like to open the uh, public consultation session. And if I can have the uh, Director of Corporate Administration to read that aloud for us. All right, good morning. This public consultation is being held to respond to comments received from anyone who may be affected by a proposed change to the city's official community plan bylaw regarding a 1.53 acre parcel of land located at 801 110th Avenue. Bylaw number 4223 would redesignate the property from service commercial to residential. And there were no written comments received. Thank you. So is there any, uh, anyone have any comments or questions or concerns about the um, proposed uh, amendment? The one uh, aspect I think we need to, um, for me anyway, to raise the awareness from changing this uh, Alaska Avenue 8th Street corridor for our um, highway uh, service commercial area is the um, view that is provided to anyone traveling through our community and that zoning for a service commercial um, is a consistent uh, zoning uh, mm -hmm. for all of that and when we start now so what this is going to do is going to change that for us uh, and put residential mixed into that uh, commercial um, zoning and I I guess for me I just want to raise that as a as a issue for us in terms of saying is that the view we want to provide to uh, for the future of our community and for people traveling through and or our own community in terms of the residents and mixing that zoning. Now I just raise it as a as a when I drove by it the other day and think so that that does absolutely change the the view of our community um, in terms of how it's um, that important corridor of people traveling through and it's just it's just a comment from my perspective. So there was no, uh, yes? Yes, hi. Um, we're a few neighbors next to that property. Yes. I'm actually right beside it. Um, and I am a bit concerned with what may happen, but I'm also concerned with what is already there. Um, I think what whomever had proposed is interesting, like um, for development. Um, given what's there already, it's a definite Our con my concern is um, that they didn't have to build this if, if the zoning was approved, that it could be like higher structures or up to four stories, I believe, um, but more apartment-like or um, just the intentions of what was going there. Definitely, I think anything would be an improvement for the city, for our community, for our, our block, our streets, because it's been, I've been there almost 14 years and it's been ongoing problems So the concern then, uh, just if I can just clarify it for you, is, is or from, from my perspective, is that the aspect of putting that type of density in there is a worry for you, a concern? Um, maybe like that bigger complex? What was proposed, like the drops here, the buildings, um, aren't so bad, I guess. But I was told, I was advised that they don't necessarily have to build something to this effect, so. I mean, there are a lot of other options for them to build, so that was my concern. I think any any um, new infrastructure there would be an improvement because it's it's um, we have a nightly show. We'll just put it that way. Living there, and um, I don't know if my neighbors feel the same way, but um, there's a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. The, so the zoning uh, proposed zoning change goes from. Uh, service commercial, which is motel, hotel, uh, Tim Hortons, that type of a right. development, into what we're going to have is a residential medium density multi, multiple family zone. Right. And so there's a, a whole component of uh, development that could fall within that uh, zone. And from my, my comments earlier were that changing it from commercial to residential changes the view that it provides to our residents. But right. your concern is what's going on there today is not great. Right. You want to see some improvement and then the concern about the size of potential what could be put in there? Yes, and I guess my concern is I'm not, um, it's the transient 
uh, kind of type of what we have there, just people in and out, which allows for a lot of, um, I'll just say illegal activity. We have a lot of drug problems there. We have a lot of, um, um, there's just ongoing stuff that you know, we're constantly dealing with. Sure. Um, traffic, you know, it'd be nice to see some, some uh, I mean, if families were there, that might be an improvement so we're not having all this transient back and forth population. But, yeah. So uh, again, so I'm for the family, the, the residential zoning. Um, my concern then is exactly what kind of structures are going to go up if there is. And, and you know, as far as view and um, privacy to my home. Yeah. Kind of okay, thank you. Councillor Malkinson? We saw a uh, detailed plan, I think, at the last meeting of uh, what was uh, proposed to be built there, Your Worship. I recall in uh, previous uh, rezonings that there were, it was somehow made a condition of uh, the rezoning for uh, uh, development to be uh, kept within certain uh, more specific guidelines than just the zone that uh, the use is prescribed for. Maybe so I'll just ask for Jim to clarify. Uh, through Your Worship, I've given this advice before. Once the property is rezoned, any of the lawful uses in the zone are permitted uh, to the maximum um, heights or densities that are allowed in the bylaw. A promise by a developer prior to rezoning, um, this is the same analogy I've used before, is just like an election promise. Mm. It actually has no uh, uh, lawful weight. It might have moral weight, but it has no lawful weight. Yeah. And I guess that was my my comment is whatever falls within that zone then it's a permitted use or a permitted structure that could be uh, built and so there is no once we provide the fourth reading to the zoning change then the developer then has the ability to build and uh, within the parameters of that zoning bylaw yeah. I guess then as living right next door to it and stuff, I, I would prefer a residential rather than a commercial. Um, so, so, yeah. Okay. I mean, we, I moved there for the purpose of, you know, being by the park and having neighbors, not um, for what we've been getting next yeah. door, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Further comments or further questions? Anyone? No? Okay, so, so the uh, thank you for um, providing that and uh, no correspondence or delegations. So I call for the first time for any further comments and a second time for further comments. What exactly is the zone that they're gonna, uh, is it R1, R2 or what? RM2. RM2. Which is residential medium density multiple family zone. But the whole street <coughs> is R1, and the multiple family home can it can change everything, can it? Yes. Well, and so that zone isn't RM1 in there. It's co service commercial today. So it could be a commercial zone, so you could put a commercial development or commercial property in there if they tore down or did something, uh, modifications to what's on there today, currently. But what they're saying is, the developer is saying, I want to change the zone so that I can put a uh, multiple family uh, zone uh, residential in there, rather than commercial. That's the four story high, no matter what, isn't it? Yeah. So well, Jim? Again, through your worship, that's what it could be. The developer's plan at the moment is uh, eight standalone two-story buildings. Yeah. Uh, but a subsequent developer or this developer could change their mind and build an apartment building. Yeah, yeah it's not RM1. It's not single-family uh, residential zoning today. It's a commercial zone today. And what they're asking to do is change it to a multiple uh, residential RM2. So for a third time, do we have any further comments? Do we know the developer? 
Well, we know who is proposing it today, but um, the developer uh, and who, the owner uh, isn't necessarily saying I'm going to develop it, I'm going to build on it. I'm just saying I'm going to change the zoning. And then he could uh, develop it, he could sell it, he could not do anything with it. So, so that's the process changes the zoning, but we don't have any impact and input into who owns it, what they do with it once the zoning is done, the zoning uh, then flaw, uh, they're allowed to develop it based on that zoning. Can we find out in advance what they're going to do? Or is there any way we can find out? Well, when they, when you, are you going to change the zoning today or? <coughs> Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna move to the to the public hearing on the zoning next. But um, once the zoning changes, then the development can occur. When and if the development changes, then the developer or the owner can uh, make the decisions as to what they're gonna do with the property. And if that development falls within the zoning uh, that's allowed for under RM2 then they can proceed with that and bring that to uh, administration as long as it falls within those guidelines and they can proceed with it. We can't object to it. But you can't can. object to it? Can we object to it later on if uh, we, didn't, we don't like what they're gonna do? Uh, through your worship, um, <coughs> if it's w allowed within the zoning, uh, council's only um, subsequent approval is a development permit for what we call form and character, which means um, issues like siting and landscaping, not use. Yeah. So any use that it's zoned to is permitted and there is no opportunity for council or the citizens uh, to prevent that happening if it's lawful under the bylaw? Right. Yeah, your opportunity to provide that input is now through the public consultation and the public hearing for the zoning. So for the third time, Thank you. So um, I'm now closed the public consultation. <coughs> Thank you uh, for that. And uh, we'll open the public here. McFadden. Good morning, Your Worship. Uh, you have in front of you a letter from myself regarding the airport sustainability plan. And I'm asking that uh, for I'll make a motion that staff be directed to contact NDIT for funding for an airport uh, economic and uh, socio-economic impact study. I don't know if I would make that motion now or under mayor's business. Um, now. So moved. Seconded, Councillor Malkinson, discussion. You ready for the question, all in favor? Opposed, it's carried, thank you. And uh, just a couple of things, your worship. I attended the shine and show, I guess you shine before you show yesterday. Uh -huh. It was just a great event. And of interest, I talked to some tourists from Ohio, Texas, and uh, Nebraska, and they were just very impressed with the show and the community. And also, they had had uh, a dinner Friday night at the GDI, which was just fabulous, they said. And also, our tourism coordinator made a presentation, which they all thought, thought was just outstanding. So I thought I saw Sam here, maybe I didn't, but uh, yeah, there, there you are, Sam, yeah. The folks were very appreciative, Sam, of that, and it was just a, a job well done, so thank you. Oh, and on the final note, I guess uh, I'm announcing today that I will be seeking re-election in November 15th fall election. <laughs> and Congrats. I would look for a standing Holy ovation Holy from Holy the gallery. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor McFadden. Other Councillor Business, Councillor Wilbur. Well played, Councillor McFadden. <laughs> well played. Um, actually, I the car show was unbelievable. I know there was over 400 participants, we know for sure. So interesting. They were set up and vehicles were still coming in. So that was nice to see and, and appreciate it. And the weather was good. Um, the other thing I want to touch base on was our fall fair parade. And so I'm not sure if the mayor's riding a horse or riding on a float, but he'll decide that. <laughs> but I, th I was interested in kind of getting feedback from the rest of council, what they thought um, was something that we could do within keeping with the theme. But I just thought it'd be really nice to have all of our different departments represented um, in our city float. So it is our community, it's our parade, and I just want to get everyone's thoughts on that and, and what direction we could set in doing that. 
So I'm not sure how that works. If we have to use a city vehicle or we can have a trailer for someone else or all well, that works, maybe staff could help with that. So you're just wondering what uh, what the plan is for the parade? Well, I'm just, yeah, I'm just interested in what the thoughts are. Um, I think that it's our community and so this parade represents it. And I just think it'd be really nice to have all of the different departments. Um, of course, the fire trucks are always in the parade, but to represent all of the city and represent all of who we are um, in the parade in a float, so. Hmm. Uh, through your worship, community services um, has the task of putting together the city float every year. They have some budget for it. Um, our issue in the past has been getting uh, anyone willing to ride on the float. Um, it's weekend work and the collective agreement <laughs> requires overtime pay and we've just had a hard time uh, getting anyone to ride on the float. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, councillors haven't written on, ridden on the float because they've been entering their own mm. vehicles with, say, boat. Uh, Terry McFadden on and so it's it's That's generally a been a few folks from community services and we could certainly uh, with energy from council do better than that for sure Professor Schumann so last year there was a wonderful flow put mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. by community services yep. and Duncan and I were there it was good uh, trotting along beside throwing out candy at one point I thought I needed to ride because it got really warm and but it's a Thursday morning, is it not? Friday. Friday. It's Friday, Friday, morning. Friday morning. Folks get the week, the morning off for that, yeah. though. Oh. By council policy. Oh. Oh. Okay. Never mind. But I mean, I'm I'm fine with riding a float or running alongside, throwing candy or helping with the float. I mean, it so, was great last year. Yeah. No. I know. I was there to help decorate it, and in mm -hmm. fact, I borrowed some of the granddaughter's uh, bins so that we could. <laughs> even out the side so yeah no I you know I'm I want to participate but I would just really like um, to represent all of the city mm -hmm. so w however we put that float together and council can participate those that want to but I just would like to see us within the theme represent all of our different departments so I absolutely am uh, in favor of helping in any way I can to help put that float together and do whatever we need to because I think it's a gr I think we should demonstrate that commitment to its biggest single event in our community and right. so I think this it's uh, the city to be there uh, is a great great initiative on our part I am going to uh, be riding a horse so I'm good to help uh, do anything I can to help put that float together and do that so do we need we don't need a motion we've got the funding available <laughs> Um, Councillor Wilbur is going to take the lead and we'll all pitch in to support it. <laughs> and you'll all be there, except I think Mr. McFadden has his own floor. He's got his own. his own car. <laughs> his own I actually parade. think Councillor Malkins is driving him. Terry doesn't want to stick his So own parade's going to be Thursday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I had asked to use the city's electric car, but the administration thought it would not be a great idea. <laughs> Election <laughs> sign on the city. Yeah. <laughs> you can take your city bus through there. <laughs> all right, so you'll take the lead on For that? For sure, bus? and then perhaps we'll do send out an email just to all the different departments and get their, at least get their ideas of how we could represent them on our Perfect. float if they're not able to participate. Thank you for that. Thank you. Other councillor business, Councillor Malkinson. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Good morning. Um, just a couple of things to mention this morning. Um, I think myself and I believe Councillor Parslow a day earlier attended uh, Pemmican Days at uh, Salto First Nations, Mulberry Lake. Uh, fantastic event. Um, I went with a couple of my friends and it's, uh, it's quite an experience, you know, just uh, looking at uh, diversity that exists in the, uh, in the Peace Region. Very uh, enlightening and uh, very, it's a great thing to be uh, exposed to, I think. It was very valuable. And uh, I was glad to meet a few of the people there. They were very... I'm glad, I think, that uh, we sent some um, representatives up there. Um, and I know that you're going to speak about it a little bit uh, later today, but I, uh, I wanted to, I suppose, flag the uh, confidence that I've had in the uh, first meeting of the uh, Residential Development Committee that uh, just began last Thursday. I think there's some uh, great work and discussion that's going on there. It's actually pretty awesome. So. Good. It's all good, and I believe 
that is it for myself right now. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for attending that uh, event. I wasn't out of town. I wasn't able to go and uh, appreciate you guys attending uh, on our behalf. Councillor Schumann. Yeah, so um, of course, congratulations to the Mile Zero Cruisers. Mm -hmm. That was an absolutely amazing, amazing event. The engagement from the community, the participation by downtown businesses and the vendors and you know, thousands of people out in our downtown. It really, you know, brought it to life and, and was spectacular. Just an amazing event. But uh, we had a, a solar, solar Days event on the 28th of June, actually, down um, in the little park, the Peace Park across from the library. And we worked together um, with several community groups, the library, the Horticultural Society, Peace Energy Cooperative was there. BC Sustainable Energy Association. And so it was a really, a really good event. It also fell on the same day as the grand opening of the Miles or the Miles Zero Park and the big event that was down there, Rotary Lake. So it, it could have been better, but it was pretty awesome. And um, one fun thing that happened was uh, I brought my RV down there because I've got it outfitted with solar panels. And as we were setting up, someone called the cops that, um, because the tourists were setting up in the park. <laughs> oh. And uh, so, yeah, the police officer came down and took all my information. And I was like, honest, honest, it's a city event, it's all good. He's like, well, I don't see any problem with it, but, you know, we've had a complaint that, you know, the tourists are setting up, they're setting up their launches, they're putting out their awnings. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was another really, really nice event, and and I guess the Horticultural Society is going to have something in September to um, do a little grand uh, unveiling of the uh, the sundial down there. Good. So it was a, it was a fun event. Thank you for that. Thank you. Further councillor business minutes three one the minutes of our regular meeting of uh, June twenty third. For adoption, Councillor McFadden, Councillor Wilbur, any errors or omissions? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And the minutes of our public meeting of Council of June 23rd. Councillor McFadden, Councillor Parslow, any errors or omissions? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Any business arising out of the minutes? Councillor Malkinson? Your Worship, uh, at the last meeting, we. Uh, receive the outcomes of the <coughs> sure water uh, phase two uh, report with a lot of public feedback and I think that uh, council's decision at that meeting was to resolve to have it at the next committee the whole meeting which is uh, actually in September um, you know and the idea that we would uh, digest it all and uh, uh, consider it and uh, liaise with other people about it I you know, it's been three weeks since the last meeting, and it would be, I believe, well, two months until the uh, nearest September meeting, the nearest committee, the whole meeting. I was, uh, well, I just uh, think that it's a very important issue, you know, that, uh, you know, staff and the public need leadership on, you know, for a future, sh for a future direction. And uh, I think that uh, one month until the next meeting in August is a... Uh, uh, fair amount of time to absorb that information that's in there. I was wondering if, uh, well, I was wondering if it would be possible to um, move <coughs> Council's deliberations or a discussion on uh, the <coughs> outcomes of Surewater Phase 2 to the August meeting rather than the se September meeting. Um, so I guess the uh, consideration for that is going to be do we have what are we what are we going to um, push to uh, have from council or from administration to have a report with some recommendations we're going to have input from council and so I'm not exactly sure what of course. Uh, I, I don't believe that was the original intention or that's the existing intention your worship and staff could easily correct me on this but uh, I believe that all that's uh, waiting to be had is uh, a council discussion on the outcome so that we can decide how to proceed rather than a report from administration so again, it's something that I don't see that uh, we should be, you know, holding back on. But I, I could stand to be corrected today. So what's council's um, you, Councillor Parzal? I uh, won't be at the August meeting. 
I, I would take part in the meeting by telephone. I'm taking some training in Victoria. Um, I don't see what uh, benefit uh, would accrue from having us in August. Uh, so I, I would prefer we stay with our plans because uh, that was the recommendation made, and I was aware that I wouldn't be here at the August meeting mm -hmm. in, in person. Yeah. <coughs> Councillor Schumann? I'm not here in person on that meeting either. Can we do two people on the phone? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> so I'm not here in person either, yeah. so I would rather we did it in September. You know, there's just, there was so much detail, and I started to plow through kind of the feedback, the comments especially were, mm -hmm. were um, really, really helpful to me in terms of <coughs> providing that kind of sense of the public's view of it. Yes. And I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to get by moving it up by a month to, in terms of, and I get the aspect of wanting to have some, we never want to leave the perception that, okay, we've just tabled it, we're just shelving it, mm. that we are working on it. And there is uh, a ton of, I think, analysis and uh, understanding of that feedback and moving it forward. And, and I also don't like the fact that, you know, you, you leave it for a time. You don't want to lose the momentum up yes. because it is such an important component for our community in terms of moving it forward. But for me, I just, um, it's, it's going to take me some, I think, uh, understanding of that in terms of that whole issue and I've had some further conversations with Jim about the administration in terms of this whole aspect so I really like the idea it's moving forward I don't like the fact that we're leaving it for a month uh, longer Two but months. or well a further month right from yeah. August hmm. well I all that considered I, I still think it's uh, I, I totally recognize how you know Councillor Parslow and Councillor Schumann's uh, participation would be limited uh, via the phone. And I think that uh, they're, uh, well, all of us are uh, very invested in the process. So I, the sense that I'm getting right now is that, uh, you know, that we ought to stick to our plans. So I, I suppose that's uh, our decision. Thank you. Yeah. Any other business arising from the minutes? Correspondence, first item five, 5.1, 5 we have an Email from Bill Woolham, request for a moratorium on fracking. Councillor Parslow. Move that it be received for information. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Schumann. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. We have an email from Dale Campbell, President of the South Peace Mile Zero Park Society. Councillor Parslow. Um, I would like to, I'm not sure if in my mind if the Historical Society has lent its support to this, so, so can I ask a question of someone in the audience? Sure. Uh, she's gone. Oh, she's gone. Okay. <laughs> and hey, <laughs> So no, you can't ask the question. No, I can't <laughs> ask the question, so I'll just ask a rhetorical question in my mind is that uh, I, I know there's, I was party to the discussions uh, about this uh, been moved that it become rather than a static display, a very active display. It seemed to have widespread support of all the participants, many of whom were historical society members. But I don't know if the historical society, or if there's any other group that should be consulted about this. But uh, I don't see a, any formal endorsement by the historical society, and I think we should get that. I'm wondering to staff, is there any other group we should be consulting with? Uh, through your worship, if you're interested in pursuing this, we'll look back into the terms of the original donation to see if there's anyone uh, flagged there. Uh, we'll uh, reach out to the formal body of the South Peace Historical Society and get a uh, formal response. We'll also do some uh, cost estimating for you. Uh, clearly, there'll be a cost to this. and. Um, so clearly it can't be done this year. It would have to be in next year's capital budget. So there's time and space to prepare those reports, if that's your will, if you wish to consider. Can I make that sure. motion? So move what Jim just said. Thank you. Seconded, <laughs> Councillor Malkinson. And I think the issue in terms of part of that from, from us is going to be, can it be moved, right? Can it physically sustain uh, the move? So I think that's a, a reasonable approach for us to take. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 
Uh, item 5-3, we have a letter from Arlene Delosky. Councillor Schumann. Yeah, I would move that uh, we give Arlene the use of the Camborac Aquatic Center parking lot. If there's no issues with that, I, I think that uh, they had a great event last year. I think they had one, and, and uh, it went over really well. So I think it's for a good cause, and she does a great job in the community raising funds for these organizations. So if there's not a problem that staff can see, I say we do it. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor McFadden. And we'll confirm dates in terms of when it does so we make sure we don't have a conflict um, with the event and any other things that are going on. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So we're going to, I just noticed we're past our uh, 9 a.m. and I'm going to move to delegations because we do have a 9 a.m. delegation. Um, Cynthia Broberg is in attendance regarding um, a bylaw infraction notice. So uh, we'll move to our delegations, please. Good morning. Good morning. You sit at that nice little table there okay. with the microphone so everybody can hear you. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you told me to hurry up before I even got out of my chair. <laughs> It's withering. Yeah. So good morning. Uh, this is Cynthia. We have Cynthia Rober uh, in attendance this morning in regards to a bylaw infraction notice that uh, she's been served for keeping uh, backyard chickens. So good morning, and the uh, floor is yours. Thank you. So um, good morning. I guess as has been said, I received a notice that keeping chickens is not permissible in residential zones in Dawson Creek, and that I'm. Re um, been ordered to remove all my chickens within 14 days and so basically what I just want to talk about today is um, Dawson Creek's bylaws uh, the complaint procedures and just how urban farming is um, becoming a very healthy urban trend that's spreading across North America including British Columbia and also keeping chickens is in line with Dawson Creek's initiatives of sustainability in 10 minutes or less, so I'm talking fast. <laughs> um, so first of all, with our, our bylaws, um, this is the bylaw that I've infracted upon, and so it says that <coughs> the following uses and no others are permitted <coughs> in a residential one zone. 
So you're allowed to have a family business, your, your main dwelling, a bed and breakfast, accessory buildings, public parks, suites, gardens, coach houses, in-law suites, um, conversation, sorry, conversion <coughs> dwellings, etc. Et but there's nothing in there about chickens, so therefore um, chickens are not permitted in Dawson Creek. However, I don't see anything listed on this list that has to do with small animals, with backyard fire pits, with hot tubs or swimming pools, um, cats, or anything. So it gets, it's clearly not a, a com comprehensive list. Um, and so I, just, I guess I'm not seeing where I've infracted necessarily upon this. And then I compared it to other bylaws and other municipalities across British Columbia. And most of the zoning bylaws are very similar. So this, for example, is from New Westminster, where you're allowed to have your main dwelling, and then it controls the number of children that you would have if you, for example, had a daycare. It talks about golf courses or home-based businesses, public utilities, transition houses, etc. But there's no real major difference. And in New Westminster, you've been able to keep chickens there since the 60s. Um, and I'd say this is not an unusual trend. This is sort of a general trend for, for bylaws. So um, the next bylaw that comes up is Dawson Creek's bylaw. It's your animal control bylaw. And there it talks about small animals, meaning birds, reptiles, rabbits, ferrets, or similar sized animals. And based on that, I would consider chickens to be a small animal. However, the bylaw enforcement <coughs> officer told me, no, no, the, the, the birds that it's referring to are things like budgies and parakeets and things that you keep inside cages inside your house. But based on that definition, I'm not so sure that that actually follows the, um, like a, uh, I think chickens falls in there. It's not clear enough if you wanted to exclude chickens. And if that's the case, then um, the only section of um, your animal control bylaw that controls chickens would be section seven. And that talks about just general animal welfare for keeping poultry or keeping chickens. Um, and it's not even mentioned specifically. So I guess I, if those are the bylaws that we have, I don't see how having chickens in town is contraindicated. <coughs> so the next thing, um, Based on other complaint processes that I've been familiar with over my time, um, typically if there is a, is a complaint um, that needs to be made by someone, so for example, if I violated someone's human rights, the person would come to me and say, hey, that was pretty offensive and you violated my human rights, and I'd say, oh, I'm sorry, and I'd have the opportunity to make amends. But the way the bylaw process is working is, um, I wasn't given the opportunity to make any amends if, if my chickens were, for example, being a nuisance and impacting upon someone's rights. But as I understand it, it's just that I have chickens that's impacting upon someone's rights. So then my next question is, well, who, who am I hurting? Because if my rights and freedoms aren't interfering with someone else's rights and freedoms, then it seems like it should be a fairly simple thing for me to keep chickens. And next, um, also, I think backyard chickens is useful is even beneficial to a community. So for example, um, Kwantlen Polytechnic University, they have a department for sustainable agriculture and food systems, and they have a specific institute for sustainable food systems, and they've done research on urban agriculture and urban farming. And um, basically, their research has found that benefits include um, increased food security for local communities if they practice urban agriculture. Um, and a reduction of farm, last, farm land loss to urban sprawl, job creation and wealth generation. So um, other people, not just me, are saying that it can benefit your community. And I think also it ties in with Dawson Creek sustainability planning. So for example, this uh, Dawson Creek website talks about carrying capacity, respect for other life forms, diverse, uh, supporting bio biodiversity, um, sharing the <coughs> amongst members of the community, and I'm not the only one with chickens in town. Um, ecological decision making makes, um, making decisions and plans in a balanced, open, and flexible manner, which I would consider maybe bylaws coming into um, consideration there, and makes the best use of local efforts and local resources and minimizes harm to the natural environment. And those are all, all the model principles that would sort of apply to keeping chickens uh, that Dawson Creek promotes. Um, plus, so just like, okay, again, local egg productions, living sustainably, 
and uh, self-reliant food production. We're talking about a neutral carbon footprint or a low carbon footprint if you're producing your food locally. You're not importing your eggs from Edmonton or Vancouver or anywhere far. You're making them right here. Um, I've had chickens. I haven't bought eggs since November of 2012, so I've had chickens for over two years, and this is the first complaint that I've had. So, How many chickens do you have? I've got five hens five and five, hens. five chicks right now. Um, I'd like to carry eight into winter. I've got a family of five, and I don't go with um, high-producing um, all white leggings, so I don't get naked A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for me, the, the um, heritage breeds, about eight over winter would, would be nice. And so I've got some chicks that are coming up to um, basically help with the flock. So you just have hens, no roosters, so no. there's no noise issues no. or anything like that. So the minute that I detect a rooster, yeah. I have a farm, a farm, a friend with a farm out of town, and they just, within 24 hours, are usually out there, sometimes 48, mm -hmm. but the, I've never had a noise complaint issue. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't do roosters. They're louder than a dog bark. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so food production, carbon neutral, Oh, uh, the eggs are um, said to be healthier if they're on pasture. So pastured eggs where chickens are foraging on green grass, they've been shown to um, have 66% more vitamin A, um, <coughs> more uh, beta carotene, three to five times more vitamin D, 19 times more omega-3 fatty acids, more folic acid, DHA, vitamin E, vitamin B12, 30% less cholesterol, 25% less saturated fatty acids. And so just in general, the, the animals are better. Plus, the animals are happier. They're, they're not being caged up in these battery operations where they're crowded. And lately, um, this spring even, we've already had, well, for example, um, ch chicken cruelty con um, convictions and just generally a agricultural um, mispractice, animals, <coughs> animal cruelty happening in our agricultural systems. And my girls don't, don't get that. So... <coughs> Um, yeah, this it, it's a it's basically an issue that's out there, and I, I feel like I'm I can do my part to prevent that issue from happening if I can sustain my own eggs. Um, education. Our first two chicks actually came from my grade one son my my son's grade one class. They hatched out chicks, and he got to bring two of them home, and so um, that's where it all started. <laughs> Uh, so it's teaching my kids where our food comes from and, and how to take care of pets responsibly. And um, well, there's in other municipalities, there's local urban 4-H clubs for poultry where children are keeping their hens in town and taking care of them. So it's helping bring agriculture into the, the community setting. Chicken manure is totally compostable. It makes excellent fertilizer. Uh, unlike, for example, dog waste, you can't really put that back on my garden. At least I wouldn't let you, but I can put chicken manure on my garden. Um, I produce about half a garbage can of waste a week. Um, all of my veggie stuff goes out to my hens, and they are way more efficient at composting all my veggie matter than the Black City composters I bought where it's frozen solid for eight months of the year here, and the other four, it's kind of dry. <laughs> so um, it's just way more efficient. And... Uh, they eat my weeds, they eat bugs, and they're fun as heck to watch. So one of, I think, the last points I have is just how out to lunch am I <laughs> when I need to have chickens in my backyard. And um, so I went and looked up the statistics for, for British Columbia. We have 4.6 million people, and those are 2013 stats. And um, there's about four million of them in, in cities, and I looked at all of our major cities when I was doing this. And if you could pick up and plunk my lot into anybody else's city, 60% of the people in BC live in a place where they would allow backyard chickens. And if my lot was larger, I'd be talking about closer to 83% of the population of BC would be allowed to have chickens. Um, and so there's a list there of just other communities in BC where chickens are allowed. Mm -hmm. And I'll just point out that Alberta also is increasing the number of backyard chickens. So Red Deer and Peace River are new. White Horse is new that they've um, started with backyard chickens this year. Mm -hmm. And then there's lots of major cities, which I don't know if it's headliney stuff, but so like 
New York City, Los Angeles, Seattle, Portland. These are all major U.S. cities, and they also allow backyard chickens. So I just, I'm not totally crazy. <laughs> crazy chicken lady. <laughs> I'd rather have a crazy chicken lady than a crazy cat lady. <laughs> Twenty cats roaming through my neighborhood. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, so this is this is it. Thank you. Sorry to have booted you out of your seat. Great presentation. Here. Very well done. Thanks. <coughs> and I forgot to start my timer, so I hope I was ten minutes. <laughs> they go over all the time. Don't worry. <laughs> Cynthia, thanks so much. Thank you. Do we have any further questions? Councillor Malkinson? Well, I suppose, uh, I suppose all the details of the uh, regulation that uh, caused the notice to be given to uh, Ms. Broberg here will be spoken about at Mayor's business, I Yes, we'll bring okay. it back under Mayor's business. All right. Thank you. Councillor Wilbur? Um, the shelter that you, you have your animals in obviously is big enough for eight chickens. Like, how big is this shelter that you have for your chicken? The, it, um, the, the coop itself is six by eight, and then the yard attached is, I think, close to six by 20, and then they are allowed out into the main yard too. So then they have the whole backyard to forage in. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so. I'm not sure exactly what the issue was that brought the bylaw forward. Um, so without knowing that, I, I wouldn't know, but I'd be willing to move my coop to the backyard. Like right now it's in a side yard. Um, and I, but I'd be willing to move the coop to the backyard or build another coop in the backyard. And they can have like a summer range and a winter range or there's a million things that I'd be flexible about doing. It's just, I don't even know what the issue was. Have you spoken That's to your neighbors? Um, so I have spoken to all the neighbors. Um, one neighbor used to have chickens a couple years ago herself. The other neighbor's fine. The other neighbors are fine. I haven't talked to the back fence neighbors, but I can't see it being them. And then the other side neighbor, uh, we ha it's a landlord with, with tenants. Um, and I suspect the complaint maybe came from that house because they're the ones that are on the side yard. But again, just... Uh, I'm not sure, and, and when the bylaw enforcement officer, he really felt it should be confidential. I wasn't yep. even sure how many people I should be asking because then it would be confidential, but um, if I had the opportunity to work with that neighbor, I think we could come to something that would be agreeable. I just, I can't promise that because I've not had that opportunity. Councillor Parslow? Yeah, I, th I must uh, speak in defense of the uh, male of the species. Uh, the, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I recognize living in the city, it would be maybe a different issue, but where I live, uh, it's a beautiful sound. Uh, I, I'm surrounded by either peacocks or roosters, and I love it. Um, but I, I recognize that people living close together, it might be too much of an intrusion. <laughs> I've kept chickens all my life, other than when I moved north, and uh, I certainly endorse what you're saying about the value and <coughs> I endorse the, uh, the move to <coughs> urban agriculture for sure. Bylaw is the bylaw and I'm sure we'll t the, and the mayor's business will be discussed but I understand one of the issues and I'm just showing some ignorance here, just a question. I, I know s one of the issues for some people in the lower mainland is that um, they say that uh, hens attract rats. Um, I've been encouraging two of my daughters who live in the Lower Mainland to, to get more self-sufficient, and, and that's been their objection and in conversation with their friends. But we don't have uh, ratus, ratus, or whatever the species is up here. We only have pack rats. Are uh, pack rats attracted to hens, do you know? I, I don't know, and I can say that I've... Um well, in the Lower Mainland, they'll, they'll do things to keep their food secure so that <coughs> they don't have... Um, rodent problems um, but I don't know about pack rats I can tell you I've seen two mice in total since the two mice years I've kept place. chickens yeah. Yeah. Um, and the neighbor's cat sort of had left <laughs> them as presents in my backyard yeah. so yeah I, I, I haven't seen a rodent infestation problem yet 
know, mice are all over the place. So I, I just was interested about the only type of rat I'm aware yeah, of. Uh, am I correct, Jim, in, in that, in, from your knowledge base? Uh, we don't have well, any other rat to. than the, the pat rat. We're close I'm to absolutely not an expert. <laughs> 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 well, the rat Thank you. And I'm not drawing any analogies <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> no inference there. But people in the South, they don't even like to keep a compost because it'll attack. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, so thank you. We'll, um, this item comes back under mayor's business, okay. and we'll address it. Council will address it at that point. So do, thank you. Do I stay till You can stay if you like. We're going to address it. It'll be brought back through under mayor's business for the uh, okay. discussion. And what time is it? It'll be uh, through this Maybe? this morning. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Next up, uh, 6.2, we have Kathleen Connolly, the Executive Director of the Dawson Creek and District Chamber of Commerce in regards to upcoming events uh, and an update. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Mm, she's good. I love it. That was a really good presentation. Yeah. yeah. So four quick things. Um, so Shaylee mentioned um, the Rotary Clubs of Dawson Creek Fall Fair Parade. Uh, so registration uh, is now available on our website. Uh, must be registered by August 5th. And the theme this year is sowing the seeds for agriculture. So make sure to register, make sure to come out and uh, be a part of it. Uh, Friday the 9th, I think. Uh, Tourism Dawson Creek is organizing the Best Dressed Business Contest for local businesses to celebrate Fall Fair Week. The Chamber partners yearly with TDC to encourage businesses to take advantage of this economic development opportunity in our community. The businesses of Dawson Creek welcome tourists from near and far with great customer service and spirit year after year. The better we are showcasing our community, the better uh, our return will be for our not-for-profits not and businesses. Um, so Samantha and I are currently securing prizes and we'll have more details in the following weeks. We encourage all businesses, whether they are chamber members or not, to participate in creating great experience for tourists and locals the week of Fall Fair. So let's make sure to do that. So the Chamber in July has sort of been focusing on some of the issues around resource development and some of the challenges with communities and, and trying to grow. So we are hosting two events. We're hosting one tomorrow, which is our Chamber Luncheon. Uh, we're welcoming Ken Chapman. Uh, Ken will be giving a presentation on the challenges communities face when undergoing significant growth as a result of rapid economic development. Mr. Chapman has extensive first-hand experience working with industry and communities in Fort McMurray to find solutions to these challenges in the areas of infrastructure, housing, health services, and other socioeconomic issues. He is the past executive director of Northern Initiatives for the Economic Development Corporation, as well as the past executive director of the Oil Sands Developers Group. In both positions, he worked with oil sands industries on socioeconomic challenges in collaboration with a wide range of regionally based stakeholders on an integrated triple bottom line approach to progress. Um, so his key goal is to improve the well-being of people, communities, and enterprises when he worked with them with the Athabasca oil sands. So we've invited him to come talk to our members tomorrow uh, uh, at the George Austin at noon. It is open to the public. Uh, contact our office if you're interested in joining. And I'd like to thank Councillors uh, Schumann, Parzel, McFadden, and Wilbur for RSVPing and coming to join us. It's a really important discussion, and we're glad that you're coming out and starting to create those um, that synergy, right? Because we need to talk about it. So the second part of that is on the 29th of July, Tuesday the 29th, we are hosting a forum which is open and free to the general public. It's called... Uh, Resource Development, Living with the Boom, and we've secured a panel of elected government officials and key government staff. So we have on the forum uh, MLA Mike Bernier, Mayors Bumstead, Jarvis, and Streeper, Karen Goodings uh, from the Regional District, Paul Jenkins, a Commissioner of the Oil and Gas Commission, and Scott Maxwell, who's involved with the Ministry of Transportation. This important and timely discussion will be moderated by Kevin Evans. I'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with Kevin. He's the past CEO of the Trades Training Authority, past executive with Retail Association of Canada, and was a host of the CBC Evening News. Kevin was a moderator at our BC Chamber AGM and did a fantastic job of encouraging discussions and, and really getting to the key and important issues. So we've asked him to come uh, host and moderate um, this session. 
The intent of this free public event is to encourage dialogue between government and the residents of areas affected by rapid growth. Our chamber has identified disconnects between government and communities. And those disconnects are not always big things, it's just understanding how it impacts us on that really grassroots level. So it's really taking the conversation from the high level and bringing it down to how it's really affecting us and impacting us and how we can benefit in a healthy, sustainable manner. And that's the key of the discussion. Uh, so we're trying, this is an effort to encourage dialogue and a better understanding of these challenges. Uh, we're hosting the event Tuesday, July 29th at 6.30 at the George Dawson. We're offering the public two hours to ask their questions or offer their co uh, comments to our elected officials and key government staff. And we encourage residents of the North and South Peace to come out and have the discussion. And uh, hopefully from there, we can um, just keep, you know, hammering on those issues and make some positive changes for our communities. So that's all we got. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Any questions? Councillor Schumann. So we don't have to RSVP to that one, right? Not we the 29th. Show up on the 29th. <coughs> open to the general public, and we're, we're really encouraging people to come out and they have concerns, this is a really good opportunity to have those discussions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item 6-3, we have uh, Mr. Sean Ball, the United Steelworkers uh, in attendance. Good morning. Good morning, Your Worship. Councilors. I'm just going to read this. Got it? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Yes, I got it. Yeah, that, that whole story. Yeah. I remember that story. <laughs> I didn't care, but, but it was more than that. But they had like, they had about twenty. Yeah, they had about twenty. I think, I think, and they did not. Thank you. Ever clean. Yeah. Good morning, Your Worship and Councillors. My name's Sean Ball. I've been asked to speak on behalf of the steelworkers about the Stop the Killing campaign. I'm asking that you consider adopting a resolution demanding the government to enforce the West Trey Law. I want to take you back to 1992. Uh, at that time, I was 18 years old. Wasn't political, wasn't an activist had no direction, barely even watched the news. May 9th, 1992, even I remember that day. <clears throat> Across the country in Nova Scotia, a West Trey mine, 26 miners died underground. It was preventable. Sons, brothers, fathers didn't come home that day. It was caused by methane gas and coal dust. Only 15 bodies were ever recovered. Every day, 
millions of us get up and go to work. Sadly, many don't get to come home. You see, every year, 1,000 Canadians are killed on the job. It's one of the worst records in the developed world. Sad, wrong, and rebellious. After this disaster, the USW fought tirelessly to adopt the West Tray amendments into the criminal code. It took 12 years, but in March of 2004, it was, we brought in Bill C-45, unanimous vote by all parties in the House of Commons. By today's standards, that's considered very unusual. I come from the sawmill industry and I remember in 2004 when this, this law was put in place, we had a safety meeting and our foreman was visibly worried about this law that really wanted to make sure that we were safe when we did our job because at the end of the day, he could be held liable. 15 years later, or 10 years later, he's, they're not feeling that fear anymore. We need to hold employers accountable for wrongful death in the workplace. One more video.
The Steelworkers launched the Stop the Killing campaign in October of 2013 at the District Health and Safety Convention, and it's been gaining momentum. We listened to people in videos like you just saw, and I'll tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Uh, these families were very courageous to, to, to get up at that panel and speak. Uh, but also make these videos. There's three more on there and I encourage you to, to watch them. 9,000 deaths and counting since 2004. On average, that's 1,000 fatalities per year or three deaths every day. Not one corporate executive has spent a single day in jail. We want the government to enforce the West Trey Law. Now of those 1,000 deaths a year, we know employers aren't responsible for all of them. Most, in fact, are unfortunate accidents. It's the ones when an employer is knowingly and willingly put another person in harm's way with no consideration for that person's well-being. That's what's unacceptable. That's where there needs to be accountability. The last thing anybody wants to ever hear is that phone ring or knock on the door when their loved one isn't coming home and later to find out that his or her's death was due to an employer's negligence? Unacceptable. USW has been making presentations to city, municipal, and district councils across the country asking them to endorse this campaign. Many councils across Canada have endorsed this resolution, some being Toronto, Hamilton, Sault Ste. Marie, Sudbury, Pictou County, Trenton in Nova Scotia, Lower Mainland Vancouver Island municipalities, in BC endorsing Stop the Killing campaign. We can now add Flin Flon, Manitoba as of Jan June 3rd. The resolution I put forward to you all uh, is a sample resolution that, that uh, I'll quickly read. Uh, enforce the West Trey Amendments to Canada's Criminal Code, whereas it has been more than two decades since the West Trey Mine disaster in Nova Scotia and a decade since amendments were made to the Criminal Code of Canada to hold corporations, their directors and executives criminally accountable for the health and safety of workers and whereas police and prosecutors are not utilizing the West Trey amendments and not investigating workplace fatalities through the lens of criminal accountability and whereas more than a thousand workers a year are killed at work. Therefore, it be resolved that this council support a campaign to urge our federal, provincial, territorial government to ensure that Crown attorneys are educated, trained, and directed to apply the West Trey Amendments. Dedicated prosecutors are given the responsibility for health and safety fatalities. Police are educated, trained, and directed to apply the West Trey Amendments. There is a greater coordination among regulators, police, and Crown attorneys so that health and safety regulators are trained to reach out to police where there is a possibility that West Trey Amendment charges are warranted. In closing, I ask for support. Please consider adopting a resolution like this one or this one itself. Please write the Attorney General showing your support. And when you're at the UBCM convention, please forward this resolution. I encourage you to go to the website, watch the videos and sign the petition joining the thousands that have already signed it. Together we can make a difference. Let's stop the killing and enforce the law. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sean. Any questions? Comments? Thank you very much. We'll uh, bring it back under our mayor's business later in the meeting. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, next item, uh, 6.4, we have Samantha McCray for Positive Living North. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks everybody for uh, allowing me to speak today. I do have some information for you if you're if you would like some, or I can sure. leave it here for the end. It's up to you. We can hand it up. Okay. Sorry, yeah, sure. Thank you. So I'm here today to uh, talk to you guys about 
I work for is called Positive Living North. It's a not-for-profit, community-based Aboriginal AIDS service organization. Um, we provide a wide array of programs and services designed to raise public awareness, um, prevent the spread of HIV, STIs, uh, so sexually transmitted infections, and hepatitis C. Um, we also aim to reduce stigma and discrimination and support people who are living with, affected by, or at risk of getting these types of illnesses. Um, our main office is in Prince George and we have another one in the Bulkley Valley and my, my office here uh, just started about a year ago. It's uh, based out of the Nowakin Friendship Centre. Um, my program is um, pretty well just based around um, prevention education. So what I do is I go out um, to anybody and any, anyone who will listen to me, anyone who will invite me in. Um, to talk about uh, HIV and STI and hepatitis prevention and harm reduction tactics. Um, since I've started, um, I'm finding that it's a much different, like HIV is a much different illness up here in the north. Um, most in other regions, like for instance in Vancouver, it's a lot of um, people are contracting HIV uh, through men who have sex with men. But up here, most cases are contracted through heterosexual contact and IV drug use. Um, I'm finding that the main issue I up here is uh, stigma and discrimination, and that's stemming from the ignorance and the general unwillingness for people to engage in conversation around, around HIV and drug use and around sex in general. Um, and another of our big concerns is that people aren't getting tested. Um, and this is also related to stigma, um, the transiency of our population with uh, the oil and gas workers, and just the lack of education and reluctance by actually some of our general practitioners to, to test people. Um, for instance, I had a lady, um, she, went, she wanted to go and get <coughs> tested for STIs, and her, her doctor actually even like, turned her away, said that, that he, wouldn't, he wouldn't test her. And she's definitely in that higher risk population that she, you know, she she should have been, she should have been tested. Um, I wanted to invite. I have a couple events coming up, and um, I don't know if you got the email I sent you, um, but one of the main ones is September 18th. We've got um, the Scotia Bank AIDS Walk for Life coming up. Um, and this is, a, this is a fundraising campaign that's done all over um, Canada, but uh, here in Dawson Creek, it's just gonna be the first one, and it's gonna be more focused on raising awareness rather than funds. Um, so I was really hoping that everyone, or I would get some support from City Council on that, whether you wanna show up for the walk, or I don't know, raise funds, or just generally participate as, in, in, I know you guys are busy, but. Um, yeah, we would really appreciate any support that you can offer us. Um, sorry, I was like, I kept it down to really short. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> yeah. over, so. You've done a great job. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any questions? So any all questions? The all the information is in here and the little, we wanted to raise funds we could. Yeah, I have pledge forms too. I didn't put them in there because I didn't want to... Um, be presumptuous. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll Always be presumptuous. <laughs> Hand out those forms. Yeah. yeah. I know it's great. When I first heard about this at the uh, harm reduction meeting, I think I probably said, you should come to city council. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's really important because a lot of people don't even know the basic fluids that HIV is transmitted through. Even some of the nurses I've talked to, um, are they, they don't necessarily know. Um, Councillor Wilbur? I was just going to say, I know that I did RSVP to both your events, so I'll encourage my colleagues to oh, do the same. thank you. So, and I, I am concerned, though, to hear that somebody has asked for help and been turned away by their doctor. So I would also encourage our doctors to please do the testing if someone asks. It's vitally important. Yeah. I was just, why would a doctor not do that? I'm not sure. That's the question I have as well. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then uh, there is um, she can she can go to the health unit because there is the the STI testing there. But um, I made an appointment for her, but of course she didn't she didn't show up, right? So she she had the courage in that moment to go to the doctor's office that day, and they turned her away. And I mean, yeah. Counsel Counselor Schumann. So. I think I read something recently where they're actually um, saying that, what was it, like every two years or every five years, like even just, like everybody should be tested. It, you know, you shouldn't just go on the fact that, oh, I was tested the last time I had my, my last child or. Yeah, well, and you have to ask for um, STI and HIV and hepatitis C testing. But there's new recommendations out of some art, and I just hear some. There's a big push for testing, um, but you do have to you have to consent to it because it's yeah. there's so many issues around confidentiality. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. We appreciate you coming and uh, giving us some. It was very very uh, worthwhile. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I want to take a five minute uh, break. Uh, yes. And uh, eight minutes. We'll be right back. <laughs> So back into our agenda, now we're through our delegations. I'm going to go back into our correspondence. Uh, item 5.4, we have a letter from uh, Mayor Sherry Green in the city of Prince George. Councillor Malkinson. Move that we uh, receive this for information, Your Worship. Thank you. Seconded, Mc Councillor McFadden. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, now through to reports. Item 7.1, we have a report from the Chief Financial Officer. Councillor McMalkinson. 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 I move that uh, we receive this report from the Chief Financial Officer and uh, that we request to borrow funds through security, or sorry, that the request to borrow funds through security issuing be received and that uh, Council approve the borrowing funds of $6,290,000 from the Municipal Finance Authority of BC as part of the 2014 fall borrowing session as authorized through Loan Authorization Capital Improvements 2013 Amendment Bylaw 4184-2013 and Loan Authorization Loran Reservoir Bylaw Number 4168-2013 and further that the Peace River Regional District be requested to consent to include the City's borrowing in their 10-year security issuing bylaw. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor <coughs> um, Parswell. Discussion? And this is just our, uh, now we move forward with the uh, borrowing uh, bylaw through the um, regional district. And um, so it's uh, an appropriate rate that we're going <coughs> to assume. So it's a positive time, I'm assuming. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, Jim. Uh, through your worship, uh, not regarding the vote, just um, to highlight. Uh, we take for granted this procedure we have in British Columbia where we all back each other's debt. This will go out now to the regional district. The regional district will endorse it and functionally every municipality in uh, the Peace River Regional District will guarantee against the default by Dawson Creek. Uh, it's a tremendously powerful message to the investment community which is how we get a 3.51% uh, rate over 10 years. Uh, but we should understand that that's a real strength of the, we often talk about some of the negative aspects of the regional district system, but this is a real strength of yeah, the regional district absolutely. system. Absolutely. Yeah, the c combination of the borrowing power and capacity through the regional district of all municipalities is an absolute advantage for us and all communities. Thank you. Uh, are you ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 7.2, report from the Director of Corporate Administration. Councillor Schumann. I move that report number 14-139 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding the Dawson Creek Annual Report for 2013 be received, and further that the re annual report be approved as presented. Seconded, Councillor Malkinson. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, report number 7.3. Councillor Malkinson. I move that uh, we receive this report from the Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development uh, regarding the uh, development application from Urban Design Group Architects on behalf of Loon Properties, Dawson Creek Incorporated, be received. Um, and that uh, development permit number 1409 and 1410 for 
the development of commercial buildings C and D, 8th Street, be authorized in principle and issued upon successful completion of the required 10-day notification period and receipt of the financial security. Thank you. Second to Councillor Parslow. <coughs> Discussion? Councillor Malkinson? Um, I uh, did pour through the, or sorry, I did uh, um, go through the uh, information that was submitted, but uh, um, the buildings or the businesses that uh, intend to occupy buildings uh, C and D, are they known or unknown? It's m Jim? Uh, through your worship, um, they may be known to someone. They are not known to us, and they're also not germane to us. Um, the, um, uh, it's not within your purview to turn down yeah, yeah. one kind of store and approve another? Of course. Just uh, the development of the mall has been uh, something that a, a lot of younger folks have uh, actually brought up to me. You know, even as I've uh, gone to schools and things like that, I think they have some sort of impression that the municipality has a hand in it. But uh, anyhow, it's been of great interest, and uh, that's, uh, that's more the reason I'm, I'm just filled with curiosity when I see development going on there. It's very exciting. Thank you. Councillor McFadden? Now, these are standalone buildings, and would they be where the old little golf course, the mini golf course was in that part of the property? Is that where it's at? No. no. I, uh, I don't do maps or, char or architecture well. The gas station that's right there on either side of two oh. buildings. On the corner facing the Safeway gas bar and then on the other side of the shell. shell yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Further comments or questions? I got the map. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and echoing uh, Councillor uh, Malkinson, it's, it, it's such a positive to see that uh, more development, more commercial, more uh, yeah. development going on uh, down there and uh, anxious to see uh, what's coming. Yes. Are we ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. <coughs> Item 7 4. Councillor Parcel? Move the report 14 1. Five three from the Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development. Read the development permit application by C. Chandler Contracting for development of 55 Britt Turner Road and 57 Britt Turner Road be received. Second to Further, I haven't finished. Yet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you took that breath. I'm moving I'll, ahead. I'll make sure I don't breathe during these things. <laughs> like the Further, the development permit one. number 14 11. <laughs> for the development of a 1,282-meter-squared multi-tenant building be authorized in principle and issued upon successful completion of the required 10-day notification period and receipt of the financial security. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Seconded, Councillor Schumann. Like the referee, if you're <laughs> breathe, take that whistle out of your mouth. <laughs> ready for the question? <laughs> All in favor? Opposed, it's carried. Thank you. Item 7.5. Mm. Councillor Wilbur. Sure, I'll make the motion that report number 14 154 from the Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development regarding the development permit application from C. Chandler Contracting on behalf of Joe Loomis Trucking Limited be received. Further, that the development permit uh, number 14 13 for the development of a commercial truck building at 46 Vic Turner be authorized in principle and issued upon successful completion of the required 10 day notification period and receipt of the financial security in the amount of $20,000. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Kenny, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Item 7.6. We have a report from the Director of, uh, Deputy Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development, Councillor Parzel. For some reason, I was keen to move this uh, recommendation. <laughs> it always <laughs> seems interesting when we're dealing with these things. The report number 14 140 from the Deputy Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development. We request for quotations 2014 26. Lagoon, sludge, removal, anaerobic cell number one be received. <laughs> Further, the council awards the contract to Global <laughs> Environmental Solutions for $216,000 plus GST and direct staff to negotiate the removal of sludge from anaerobic cell number two within the scope of the capital budget with the successful bidder. 
I'm all in favor of sledge removal. <laughs> Seconded by <laughs> Councillor Wilbur. Discussion. <laughs> I have a question, um, just for, I, I know I'm moving it, I mean it's necessary work, but just to staff here. Um, can you talk about the interplay in this recommendation between cell number one and cell number two? In the, in the second sentence, it's cell number one, and in the penultimate sentence, it's cell number two. Is there a linkage, uh, or is it a... No, no, when they, when they negotiate the first one, they're going to... Do the second Just one. Just some explanation. Pre uh, worship, the original tender was for the removal of sludge from cell number one. Right. Uh, because the price came in so reasonable, and we had a $350,000 budget, we'd like to negotiate for further removal out of uh, cell number two, which uh, is also due to have removal done in the next few years. I knew there was a logical explanation from staff. I, I got that. <laughs> Did you get yes. that? Yes. <laughs> I told you I, I missed that. that. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> further discussion? You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 7.7, .7, Dire Deputy Director of Community Services, Councillor Wilbur. Sure, I'll make the motion that report number 14-144 from the Deputy Director of Community Services regarding ICE allocation policy be received. <coughs> Further, that Council approve the attached policy revisions pending the 30-day review. Thank you. Second to Councillor Kenny. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.8, Councillor Malkinson. Move that uh, we receive this report from the Deputy Director of Community Services regarding the Memorial Arena concession and that uh, Council award the Memorial Arena concession tender to Hamilton Food and Beverage Services and further the Council direct staff to execute a lease agreement for a three-year term in the amount of $5,000 per year plus taxes commencing July 21st, 2014 and ending April 30th, 2017. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Wilbur, discussion? First time in 30 years that I am aware of or been involved in the rinks that the minor hockey are no longer involved in the concession of mm. the uh, arena. It's un unbelievable how long that they uh, operated that concession and uh, so it's uh, interesting to see that yeah. evolve over time. Uh, ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. 7.9, Councillor Schumann. Move that report number 14-151 from the Deputy Director of Community Services regarding the temporary use permit extension be received. Further, that the existing temporary use permit 13-02 for cattle holding area located east of the Lakota Agriplex warm-up ring between the City, the Mile Zero Roping Club, and the Peace River Cutting Horse Association be approved in principle for a one-year term commencing October 1st, 2014. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Kenny, <laughs> discussion. Again, just you know, you see this uh, the the amount of activity, the amount of uh, uh, events that took place in that Lakota Center. It's always unbelievable to me how busy uh, it is, and I got a ton of really good feedback from the user groups uh, associated with it uh, as we allowed that temporary use uh, last year for it. So, you know, it just continues to see the demonstrate that facility and the usefulness that it is providing to all different aspects. Councillor Malkinson? I was uh, opposed to the uh, concept originally, Your Worship, last year when we were uh, considering this, but, uh, um, you know, seeing that the extension includes, uh, well, it says there's no, uh, you know, all the financial implications will be borne by the uh, two user groups and uh, that uh, no... Um, no feedback, no negative feedback has been received about it so far that uh, I think I'll be able to support it Good. this time. Thank you. Councillor Wilbur? I was actually just that it was temporary last time and it's temporary again and I'm wondering if um, it would if it would be in their benefit to maybe come back with a permanent plan or is there an issue around that? Jim? Uh, through your worship, in fact, we're advising them that they have to. There's a lawful limitation on how long you can do this temporarily. So mm -hmm. if they wish the continued use they're actually going to have to go to the extent of, a, of uh, seeking a rezoning and a, and a permanence to the, to the situation. And for us, I think now having experienced it for a couple of seasons, it gives us some understanding of what you want to see in terms of if it does evolve into a permanent uh, use for it. It gives us the opportunity to try to guide how and what we want to see uh, that development for the holding pens and the use and all of that stuff. I think it's just a, 
very positive uh, opportunity for us to look at it for a second season to see what it does. Well, it's been very yeah. beneficial yeah. to the center, so yeah. yeah. yeah no, thank you. Uh, any further comments, questions? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Item 7.10, report from the Deputy Director of Community Services, Councillor McFadden. I'll move that uh, report number 14-143 from the Deputy Director of Community Services regarding the Grandview School be received and further that Council direct staff to decommission and winterize the Grandview School in September 2014. Further, that staff coordinate the work with the Kiwanis Performing Arts Center's transition to the Calvin Crook Center for the Arts. Thank you. Second to Councillor uh, Parslow. Discussion? Councillor Parslow? Yes, I, I think this is a prudent move. Um, but just to s just for putting it out there, how are we, when are we going to as council provide direction to staff on disposal of this uh, <laughs> facility and, and the possible sale of the, of the land? We, we do need to, I believe I'm correct in saying that staff needs some direction there yeah. sometime. So uh, absolutely, I think, you know, this one um, is, a, is an example of a prime, prime location a prime piece of property within a core uh, area in the north uh, segment of town that we need to be able to engage in that uh, discussion and provide that direction uh, to administration in terms of uh, what and how we move forward with that. And I think also the old swimming pool is another one. So to me, there's some capital uh, dollars that are going to need to be uh, have in our conversations in the next uh, short while because of the prominence of, I think, the, the availability and the value of those properties are going to become more and more uh, important for us. So, Councillor Malkinson first, then Schumann. Sure. Thank you, Your Worship. I remember this being a strategic priority last year, as we had planned to, like the year before that and the year before that, move into the Calvin Crook Center um, that year. Um, it was a strategic priority that I think we were going to get to, you know, public feedback on and... Uh, Council was going to be involved with. That's uh, that's the process that I was envisioning, but perhaps uh, staff's memory of what was discussed at the strategic planning sessions is a little better than mine. Uh, through your worship, that strategic item wasn't actioned and is now no, no longer exists. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of irrelevant what you had planned to do at that point. It's what you plan to do going forward. Yeah. Councillor Schumann? So it, through you to staff, is this something that we would uh, flag for for our budget budget talks next year? The decommission or the <clears throat> deconstruction of of the Grandview School. Uh, that would depend on where council wishes to go. The conversation the last time around was that you might wish to issue an RFP where people had to uh, respond to you what they would do with the property as well as commit to uh, demolishing the old building. Um, so I mean, you had you had envisioned the last time around sort of. Uh, a process where you didn't demolish the building and take control of the land and market it off for some purpose, but rather accepted proposals to have all that done for you. Mm -hmm. okay. Councillor Parslow? Yeah, I, I picking up on something you, you said, well, I mean, you threw in the old swimming pool. Uh, maybe we can, could we flag this for a committee of the whole for just some discussion and what, as to process that we want to follow? Sure because th there's an opportunity here perhaps for some community engagement. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Good. So and so and for a future uh, committee of the whole meeting, uh, if absolutely. that's in order, Jim? Uh, with a resolution, we'll forward it to your to committee of the whole. Yes. Perfect. Thank so you. So moved, if they may make that make motion. Moved by Councillor Parslow. Sorry. So oh, we got a we motion on the floor yeah. first. Sorry. I got to yeah. get rid of this. Okay. We got to deal with this one first. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Malkinson. <laughs> well, just while we're <laughs> just while we're still on the topic of uh, uh, what we're discussing right now, I, I was wondering: says staff coordinate to work with the Kiwanis Performing Arts Center transition from the Calvin Cook Center to the Arts. Um, how uh, w is there any sense that I could get right now of the uh, nature of all our involvement uh, moving? You know, all the facilities from one center to the other. Are the uh, is the KPAC group uh, um, bearing a lot of the uh, um, strains that will uh, be going along with that move or is the city uh, getting quite involved? I'm just curious. We, Jim? Uh, through your worship, the current facility is um, 
the entire building is leased to the Qantas Performing Arts Center, and everyone in it is therefore a tenant of theirs. Mm. And the relationship is between them and KPAC. Uh, you have similarly entered a contract where the new center uh, is leased to the Qantas Performing Arts Center, and all the relationships will be between, be between the groups and KPAC as KPAC's tenants. Yes. So you are not in that loop. Um, you have given me no budget to assist anybody moving anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so I assume the groups are on their own in that regard. Okay. Councillor Schumann? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I can tell you that uh, the Kiwanis Performing Arts Society is planning on doing all of that move. Okay. Cool. City, we won't be footing the bill for that. Well, it was just, just a mere curiosity. Because I, you know, had known the consultations that were sort of ongoing, and I wondered, I we wondered if that was sort of uh, extending into the logistical, and I suppose it is. But we are uh, convening a joint meeting of all the users about timing and schedules, yes, uh, and technical details, how much weight the elevator can yeah. take, yes. that sort of yeah. thing, uh, which is not meant by us to be an indication that the city is taking on the moving of that stuff. We're mm -hmm. just helping with the details of that. Yes, yes. Very good. And we have a report coming in later in, uh, on an update on the Calvin Kirk uh, Center so from Duncan. <laughs> uh, so on the motion for decommissioning, you're ready for the question. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Charlie. Item yeah. 7.13. Do we have Charlie's Oh, other yes. Motion? we got another motion that we <laughs> wanted to put forward. <laughs> I'd like to breathe. I'd like to move that uh, the September committee of the whole meeting that council have a discussion on the future of the Grandview property and the centennial the old centennial swimming pool. Second to Councillor Schumann. Discussion. Are there other just through to Jim, are there other <coughs> properties uh, that we should be uh, involving uh, in that conversation or discussion? Uh, through your worship, um, those, well, at the moment, the old swimming pool is the um, uh, biggest um, unused, unusable structure we have. Um, KPAC will be a close second. Uh, we have uh, other buildings that are no longer in use, uh, but those we tend to take care of on just an operational uh, basis. Sometimes we'll repurpose them, sometimes we'll demolish them, but they're all uh, within operational budgets. These are two items that are, uh, they're gonna need significant capital resources just for a, a demolition. I guess I was thinking about the aspect of land value, land availability, land uh, development opportunities that may be uh, within the city's uh, ownership that um, may be more valuable in terms of property values than they are in terms of the per and that's my only reason for the question is not that I'm aware of your worship but okay um, we'll move forward with those two for the for the fall yeah. uh, committee of the whole meeting thank you any further question all in favor opposed it's carried thank you item 8 8.1 we have uh, OCP amendment oh, councillor <coughs> 712 7-11, Sorry, I just scratched them off when Councillor Parslow was speaking there. Oh, I see. Just <laughs> seven eleven. <laughs> Report from the Deputy Director of Corporate Administration, Councillor Schumann. <laughs> so I think this comes because of me, so I should make this recommendation. Yes, you should. <laughs> Report number 14-152 from the Deputy Director of Corporate Administration regarding our carbon ne neutral logo be received. Further, that Council rescind its previous direction to include the carbon neutral logo on all city do documents as supplies are depleted and direct staff to include the most current carbon neutral logo on all city generated electronic documents, including the email signature of all City of Dawson Creek staff email accounts. Thank you. Second to Councillor Parslow. Discussion? Councillor Schumann? Yeah, so um, looking at the report, I can absolutely understand how doing the electronics is definitely the better way to go. So thank you for that. Thank you. Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Item 7 uh, 712, Deputy Director of Community Services, Councillor Wilbur. 
Uh, I make the motion to report number 14-150 from the Deputy Director of Community Services regarding the Arena Refrigeration Service Contract Tender number 2014-17 be received. Further, that the Arena Refrigeration Contract between the City and Simcoe Refrigeration be approved for a three-year term commencing June 24, 2014 for an annual fee of $10,260 plus additional taxes. Thank you. Seconded. <coughs> Councillor Parslow. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor Malkinson. Sorry, Your Worship. Just, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uncertain here. I just uh, see the, uh, you know, proposed, uh, proposed uh, scope of work and the prices that go along with it. And staff even made a note of the, you know, 37% uh, materials markup percentage in each year for the, uh, for the contract here. And I'm just, I'm wondering maybe if, you know, a, a year's contract would, uh, you know, sort of, uh, help us get uh, maybe more competition or whether this 37% is in line. I'm just a little uncertain about it, just generally. And I'm wondering if I could get uh, uh, maybe reassured. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I really can't provide that reassurance, Your Worship. The market does what the market does. And uh, this was advertised out as a uh, multi-year tender. This is the company that bid. This is the conditions they bid on. It's within the normal market amounts uh, because it's within estimate. Uh, but whether uh, some people would charge more hourly and less mm. markup or the reverse, I really couldn't tell you. I suppose. Thank you. Is that all right for you? Yes, that yes. Get it? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Move to bylaws 8, 8.1 OCP amendment. Bylaw number 4223. Jim? Your Worship, maybe before you uh, contemplate your decision on that, it would be helpful if I read the uses that are permitted at the moment because of the nature of the conversation that came up in the hearing. Sure. So at the moment on the property commonly referred to as the Aloha Motel, uh, you could have an automobile, boat, trailer, or manufactured home sales and rentals. You could have a car wash. You could have a delivery facility, a gasoline service station, a cafe or restaurant, a casino, a catering establishment, a retail food store, a hard store, hardware store, a laundromat, uh, machinery and equipment sales, repair and servicing, building material sales, a hotel, public parking facility, a public transportation depot, a commercial parking facility, a chiropractic office, an auditorium, gymnasium or meeting hall, truck or truck trailer sales and rentals, an amusement arcade, a billiard and pool hall, a bowling alley, a miniature golf course, a racket court, a roller rink, a skating rink, a swimming pool, a curling rink, automotive repair shop, tire sales, automotive parts supply, or accessory buildings for any of those things. Uh, you could have a vet clinic, you could have a retail store of any kind, or a farmer's market. So it's a very broad zone right now. Thank you. Um, so, OCP amendment to bylaw. <coughs> Councillor McFadden. So moved for third reading and adoption. Thank you. Second to Councillor Schumann. Discussion. <coughs> Comments or questions? You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Zoning amendment bylaw number uh, 1411, bylaw number 4224. Councillor Malkinson, seconded Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 8.3, 8, 8 we have the emergency program bylaw number 4225. Councillor Schumann moves, seconded Councillor Malkinson. Yep. Dis sure. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Report number 14142 from the Deputy. Director of Corporate Administration. I'll pull it up here. I got it. Councillor Malkinson. Move that we receive this report from the Director of Corporate Administration uh, regarding local area service projects and uh, that this uh, local area service establishing bylaw number 4211, 4212, and 4213, and loan authorization bylaw number 4215 be adopted. And further, that uh, local area service parcel tax uh, parcel tax roll preparation amendment bylaw number four two eight eight, and parcel tax amendment bylaw 
number 4299. Be given first three readings. Thank you. So 4229. Oh, darn it. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Parslow. Discussion? You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. 8.5, report number 14146 from the Deputy Dir uh, Corporate Administ Director of Corporate Administration. Councillor Schumann. Uh, move that report number 14-146 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding the loan authorization bylaw 4216 be received. Further, that the loan authorization 2014 sidewalk replacements bylaw number 4216 2014 be adopted. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. 8.6, report number 14138 from the Director of Corporate Administration. Councillor McFadden. I'd move that report number 14-138 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding zoning amendment 14-12 <coughs> bylaw number 4226 2014 be received. And further that zoning amendment bylaw number 4226 2014 be given first and second readings and that staff be directed to complete the process for a formal public hearing. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Malkinson. Discussion? Are you ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, 8.7, report number 14155 from the De Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development. Councillor Malkinson. Move that uh, we receive this report from the Director of Infrastructure and Sustainable Development regarding the Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 4227 and uh, that Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 4227 2014 proposing an amendment to incorporate the regulation of row housing into the CD2 Comprehensive Development 2 Zone uh, be denied as it is not consistent with the Harvest View Sunset Ridge Development Neighborhood Plan. Or sorry, Neighborhood Plan, no development. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Kenny. Discussion? Councillor Wilbur? Um, I just see that we were given um, a, a handout here, and um, it is noted in here that there's no wish to add any more or take away any housing units, so I'm assuming this, I see that we have the gentleman here, so I'm assuming that this picture is what you're proposing to build. Can we, is it possible to have? Your Worship, by unanimous consent of Council, we can't have the delegation or Come sorry forward uh, and just explain like this is quite a bit to take in okay so that, uh, everyone's in favor I just want to make sure I just clarify it so we're okay to have by unanimous consent we're okay to have perfect so uh, all those in favor of allowing the uh, attendees to uh, speak, to, speak to it all in favor opposed perfect morning Good morning thank you so morning. much for the opportunity um, Dwayne Stewart <clears throat> from Western Canadian Property Group, um, Jim Ferry as well. Uh, the amendment that we seek to, this, to the CD2 zone uh, that we have in place uh, in our specific development uh, is one that we come to only as a result of working with the OCP and working with the development department to determine the best way to go about and continue to develop the infrastructure that we're putting in place there. One of the things that we found uh, as we've gone through the development process is that people have come to us and asked for more entry-level housing more housing that's suitable for uh, their own private backyards, their own front entryway, but not large, <coughs> not on a large as a lot as a single family home, uh, and more in a sub $250,000 price point. I know that when we originally started this development, uh, something of that nature was uh, desired by, by council, and we've been unable to provide that, that sort of product at this time, but this amendment to our zoning, which we do not see as a wholesale change to the OCP, but rather uh, in a gray area that exists as we transition between uh, the multifamily zone and the single family zone. I've noted in my letter that uh, the OCP itself talks very much about the fact that it is a guideline, that, uh, that the process of enforcing the OCP will be a cooperative one, both between the economic development of the properties in question, uh, as well as the needs of the city as they evolve. What we're proposing, and this, keep in mind, is for one stretch uh, along 87th Avenue. We're not asking to amend the OCP in a large way, nor are we asking to either increase or decrease density. That The possible density on the south side of 87th, uh, between 17th Avenue and the future 16th Avenue, is a maximum of 22 units, and we wish to maintain that. 
Currently, the, the, the CD2 zone would allow us to put up a single family home plus a coach house or a single family home plus a, a tenanted suite below. Not a, t not a tenanted suite and a coach house. It would result in 22 units along that, that lot. What we're proposing uh, is, is sort of a brownstone inspired row housing concept. You've just gotten a color copy of that today. Uh, where you would have uh, front entrances off of 87th. Uh, you would have rear access off of the alleyways. One of the innovative concepts of the OCP is the alleyway access. And we find that as we develop the concept, the actual way that you will access this area by vehicle, and therefore the center of the village, uh, is in fact the alleyway. And this is consistent with that, uh, that, uh, that approach. The OCP does talk about the village concept. It's mentioned very specifically. And in my letter, I've made reference to the actual portion of the OCP that discusses the village concept. We want to provide a bright and cheery front entrance that faces the, the single family homes on the north side uh, of 87th. Uh, and we want to provide uh, an entry level product uh, that the, the community will be able to use as a template, we hope, uh, for future development where, that, where that's appropriate. Uh, we think that this, uh, this concept is consistent with the OCP. And while it is, uh, if you look at the actual map, and I'm sorry I don't have a copy of the map uh, at the moment here, you'll see that the map transitions right at that point, north of the alleyway, south of 87th. And it's that transition piece where we're wanting to put in a transition uh, of homes from multifamily uh, to a, a single family row home to then single family. And then further north as you go, other developers are being encouraged to do larger single family lots. And that will again transition as you move further north. Um, that is the request. It is not a wholesale change, but rather the addition, the technical addition that we've asked for is just to add one type of housing definition into the CD2 zone not to wholesale change the zone, and it's not a rezoning application, it's to amend the zone, zone itself to add one kind of housing, and it's this particular type of housing that we're requesting be added. We would then go through a development permit process and an actual building permit before anything was, was built, of course. Thank you. I think just one of the things to add in here is this type of housing is, you know, it's obviously inspired by the New York, Philadelphia row housing from past. It's become very popular in Vancouver, in Calgary, it provides a smaller unit for that entry home buyer that, and they still have their own front yard, their own front door, their own little backyard. So it, and it doesn't put them in a townhouse complex where you've got a bunch of townhouses around a parking lot. It's, they, they live on a street, they have that street feel. And we have actually had residents of Dawson Creek coming to us sort of looking for that type of product, asking us, well, on our townhomes, can you do something that's not you know, I don't want to feel like I'm in a complex. So what we're asking for is something that there seems to be a real demand for and is more for the end user in Dawson Creek for the, the residents of Dawson Creek than the real rental market in Dawson Creek. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your uh, input. Any questions for us? So any questions any comments I, so th this what you're proposing here this uh, these don't have suites or coach houses so that no. changes that off yeah. that yeah. single we, family you, home you lose suites you lose coach houses it would be down one side of 87th you'd still have single family on the other side so it's still more of a community not that high density rental market this is more the end user market so oh, it's for the okay. it's for the first time home buyer you know young couple with one child this is an easier product for them to get into and still live on a street and feel a sense of community not feel like they live in a complex thank you councilor wilbur i'm through you to staff um in the report it mentions the laneways but are, are we not requiring that these laneways are paved in this development in yes they are yeah they're paved for sure. uh through your worship uh so a couple points firstly administration disputes uh the developer's assertion that this is a gray area and not a change uh I was born at night, but it wasn't last night, and I don't advise council takes their legal advice from developers, thank you. <laughs> How about our independent legal advice instead? Uh, secondly, at the last meeting, you had a very similar request. Uh, staff again said, this is a very new plan. This plan was meant to manage the market, not be managed by the market, and you turned down that applicant. Here you have at this meeting um, a request to change the plan a very new plan for market condition reasons. Uh, you know, how about we keep a level playing field here? 
How about we honor the fact that you have a residential development committee working on issues like is a lane wide enough for the traffic and parking that you need uh, and keep the playing field level until all those decisions have been made. How's that for an option? Thank you. Any further comments, questions? Councillor Wilbur? I, I was, I appreciate what Jim said I, and I do um, appreciate the fact that we did have someone else come and make a change and um, really in my mind of thinking I, I wish this would have been a part of the plan originally because I see this is the, the need that we're lacking in our community so I'm really torn over this because this is a nice transition from that density to single family homes um, and it's it's just a way for those people that can't afford the home so I'm really torn because I really wish I really wish that would have been part of the original plan so uh, thank you the any further comments questions if I may comment to, to that comment the, the reason why it wasn't part of the original plan is that we had to work with the plan a little further and work with the marketplace and understand those requirements. And that's why, how it evolved to this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Malkinson. Um, so I, well, I, I'm just wondering here, you're, um, we've, we've heard from the uh, delegation. We have a chance to uh, speak about this. Yep, absolutely. That's why we're uh, in the... Uh, okay. Well, I was just... Uh, that's uh, good to hear, Your Worship. Um, I'm uh, in favor of the recommendation from staff, very much so. I uh, am, uh, you know, for there's a number of great points that they've identified, and I'm just uh, uh, very enthusiastic about uh, the uh, uh, plan as proposed. And I think that uh, you know, if you uh, look to the end, you know, at the at the summary that's been provided by uh, our director of uh, infrastructure, that uh, I think there's some useful information in there that might. Uh, guide our uh, our decision making quite well so thank you yeah. councillor Schumann yeah so I really like the uh, the neighborhood plan also uh, the density in there the separate zones for uh, multifamily and um, all uh, that whole plan is really great when I look at this though I see something that my 24 year old and her her partner could actually get into sure. like and so I'm with Shaley on this uh, I know that at the last meeting we did um, make a decision but um, a, a against a change in in the plan but to me that change in the plan was going from density which I want to single-family homes so that's why I was against that whole thing um, I see this as a little change not uh, one that is going to be detrimental as noted it's not increasing or decreasing density and I find it quite attractive so thank you thank you further discussion Councillor Parzel yeah this this is problematic um, and I just we do have this uh, Development Committee just be, had its inaugural meeting, uh, what, last week, wasn't it? And I just uh, would like some of these issues to be processed through that committee. Um, I, I do not want to deal with things in a ad hoc, piecemeal way. And yet I s fully support what Councillor Wilbur and Schumann have said as well. I like the concept, but I... I'm going to vote uh, in favor of the staff of the recommendation reluctantly because I do not want ad hoc approach to this thing. I would welcome, once we process the issue of uses of lanes, widths <coughs> of lanes, and all that stuff uh, through this committee, which we've sort of honored ourselves to, to support. Um, so I'm just hoping that this proposal can come back when that committee has done its work. So at the moment, I'm going to have to support uh, the recommendation that's before us. Thank you. Councillor Kenny? I really love the look of this too, and, and I appreciate new home buyers. But uh, with the residential committee, I, th I think we really do have to you know, put the brakes on variances and changes until we have a deeper understanding of where we want to go. 
and Thank you. and hopefully this will, you know, this will be an opportunity that we may be able to look at at a later time. But right now, I think that we would be insulting the residential committee to start making decisions. Like Thank this. you, uh, Councillor Schumann. Um, I'm just curious to know how the <clears throat> the whole um, water storm drainage business I saw it mentioned how that plays into this. It plays into Jim. Sorry, sorry, Jim? I don't know who she was um, Well, through you, Your Worship, um, the in terms of the uh, ability to service these lots, I don't believe it's germane. Those, there'll either have to be an alternative um, provided on site, as uh, Western Properties has done uh, done so far, or that uh, stormwater catchment's going to have to be built. Right. Thank you. My, sorry, my comment was that the reason why we're proposing this is that we're unable to continue to develop further to the east. We can't do 16th Street uh, Avenue, uh, and we cannot continue along uh, into the into the eastern part of our property until such time as the stormwater detention system is solved. For us, this is an excellent way to take advantage of the very expensive road we're having to build, along with the infrastructure that goes into that road to take care of the um, uh, the, the, the reservoir uh, to our north. So all of that, what's happening is, is leaving this uh, portion unused to its highest and best use. We feel this is a solution to that. It's also a timing issue uh, in the sense that that road will be ready this year, that land will be ready to build on this year, and we would want to be in the ground prior to the winter season with respect to these projects. Uh, the, we don't have any indication, although we fully respect and appreciate the Council's working on the stormwater management situation, we have no time horizon <coughs> for that. Further comments, questions for Council? So the, uh, for me, the issue is absolutely the development that we're facing in our community. We saw about five or six previous items we dealt with with development that's going on into our community. This isn't a phenomenon that we're going to end or see a, a, a conclusion to in the very near future. And to me, the aspect of how we're guiding the community in terms of the residential development and the pressures of how we see that unfold is a significant conversation as we've been engaging in. And so I absolutely, um, when, I, when we dealt with it uh, three or four months ago, and as we continue to deal with it today, I think we need to ensure from my perspective that we take that opportunity to really understand what and how our community is going to develop. So any further comments, questions? Councillor Wilbur. I just, so as it stands now, there would be single family homes there with possibly suites or coach houses? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Versus these. Yeah. And those would be priced in the um, well above $500,000 price point. Okay, so the other, the other question I have to you, Mayor, um, and staff can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought at some point when we were um, developing the committee and stuff that it was uh, mentioned that it, it wasn't that committee's job to tear apart the OCP or reconstruct it, that they'd be looking at parking issues, secondary suites, so the issues laid out to them. So am I wrong in that, or are we going to then ask this committee to be looking at these type of things within the OCP? Yeah, uh, certainly I think we've demonstrated and heard from the first time at our uh, residential development committee meeting the variety of issues that we're going to be faced with in terms of considering and certainly it isn't the job of the committee to deal with the OCP but the residential development of which this is one in my view and I think we um, from my perspective I want to move forward with the residential development committee instead of dealing with ad hoc requests every meeting we have in this council about how the residential development is occurring in our community and that's just my view hmm. i do agree on the grounds that i did make that motion <laughs> for the subcommittee so further comments questions you ready for the question all in favor opposed carry thank you thank you 8.8 right. 8. deputy director of corporate administration general local election bylaw amendment yep Councillor Malkinson. Your Worship, I move that um, that we receive this report from the Deputy Director of Corporate Administration regarding the election bylaw amendment and that uh, we give first three readings to the general local government election bylaw number 4230 2014. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Kenny. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Um, item nine, mayor's business. And so the first item on my agenda I wanted to bring forward was um, I had about two or three calls last week 
um, in regards to noxious weeds, concerns raised by uh, members of the community about uh, the um, starting to see the uh, aspect of noxious weeds. In a, I didn't want to use the word creeping into their properties from neighboring properties, but affecting their properties. Um, and so I asked uh, Jim about it when uh, I got the uh, calls inquiring about our policy and how we administered it. And so it came back that. Uh, we did have a presentation, Council did have a presentation last year in regards to noxious weeds and there was no direction uh, given other than, for administration, other than uh, through a, uh, the bylaw enforcement would be uh, through uh, complaint-based uh, process. Only Actually. for the height of them, not for the, for the fact yeah. that they're weeds? There, okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring it back because I see it's um, with the development that are going on and in terms of some of, you know, you're locked into your community, not locked, but uh, surrounded by agricultural land that traditionally can have that impact on the neighboring properties that's coming in and affecting them. And with the development that's going on, you're not seeing that typical agricultural use potentially, which uh, is impacting those uh, community residents. So I just wanted to bring it back to council and say, that it was it starting to become an issue for our residents. I wanted to raise it uh, for council in terms of is that uh, still the process that we have an understanding of how we want to handle it and we want to continue with it. It's a big issue for us if we start to take it on in any other uh, manner than that. So, Councillor Parslow. Yeah, I look after my noxious weeds when they when they show their themselves, uh, and I think uh, there's a role in the sense of education, but. Uh, if you start uh, having a weed control yeah. thing, you're, you're into a ma major cost thing. And, and I, uh, I, I think uh, the regional district has some educational material. I think that was the presentation, wasn't it, Jim? Yes. Yeah. 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 And so uh, in, m in my uh, rural neighborhood, uh, people inform each other when they see noxious weeds, and we collectively take care of it and I th would encourage local city of Dawson Tree people to do the same thing. Sure. Any other comments? Councillor Schumann? So how it is now if uh, there was an empty lot and it was you know let's say it's covered in thistle bylaw could be called because it's a certain height so they could go in and mow it instead of killing it is that is that how it? Uh, through your worship our current <coughs> bylaw says um, anything that exceeds uh, basically a foot tall uh, we can take enforcement actions give 30 days to cut and if you don't cut we'll come and cut um, that's not an effective strategy against most weeds because cutting them is the very worst thing you can do uh, and if you do cut them you need to bag them immediately we don't have anything in our bylaw that is tagged towards controlling the spread of noxious weeds when the regional district were in front of you they were explaining uh, what a tall task it is to do so um, and encouraging you to adopt your own bylaw, allowing you to enforce the Weed Control Act and train up bylaw enforcement officers, several of which you would have to hire so that they were uh, capable of recognizing those weeds and have a full enforcement program in addition to an enforcement program or uh, education program. Uh, you didn't take them up on that offer. And uh, the issue is vibrant every year. The wind blows from the west, and uh, and there's absolutely zero possibility that the regional district or the city of Dawson Creek will eradicate noxious weeds. They will arrive every year again. Thank you. So it was just an information uh, thing for myself and I wanted to bring it back because I did have uh, yeah. two or three calls. So. Councillor Schumann? Can we um, move to the item? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I just realized that. So, um, I, any, any further comments on that for the noxious weeds? So I wanted to, and uh, it's a good Kill point. We have, uh, we had uh, Ms. Broberg uh, who's uh, waited anxiously to uh, hear from us. So we had a presentation on um, the bylaw infraction with um, that she'd been served with respect to the um, animals. So I wanted to bring that back. So Councillor Parslow. Well, subject to staff advisement around process, my inclination is to, I'd, I'd like us to promote urban agriculture. Uh, within the bounds of uh, neighbor, good neighborly practices and, and so on. Um, and that would require a, a bylaw am amendment, which might entail uh, uh, some work. I don't know how much work, but I, d I just don't want to 
deal with hen. There's, a, there's other other way, other things that people may want to uh, to start uh, doing. I mean, uh, from my background, everybody had hens. Every, people bred rabbits for meat. I mean, uh, who knows what the bounds are? Uh, turkeys certainly were were produced. So. Um, I think there is a need. I, I really appreciate the presentation. I really think there's a need to to address this matter. In the interim, we have somebody, uh, our staff has acted correctly, um, and I'm, I'm wondering how we might deal with it. My, what advice would, I, would staff give council if we flag that we intend to facilitate urban agriculture. That's the fir uh, first decision point. And if we do, uh, what ways do we have of dealing with this particular issue of this bylaw infraction? So uh, am I correct in, in, in that sequence that we, we need to have as a decision point? Are we going to try to facilitate uh, urban agriculture in a comprehensive way, rather than, again, a piecemeal Hens one month, rabbits two months later, or whatever else may come down. So let's, uh, maybe we'll just ask Jim if he can give us some, um, so first uh, we have the bylaw infraction that we have to deal with, yeah. and second, yeah. if we're con contemplating, as Councillor Parslow says, some urban agricultural uh, permitted uses, how do we deal with them jointly or separately? Uh, well, through your worship, uh, the um, common practice, if you were contemplating making lawful something that is not lawful at the moment. And yes, you would need to look at a uh, recommendation on regulations around that and sample bylaws and that sort of thing, uh, is that you'd suspend enforcement of the existing bylaw while you were doing that. Um, so that, I mean, that's a fairly normal process that you've gone through in the past. Uh, one of the things uh, Ms. Broberg was mentioning is the arcane law that you are aware of and that she is not, which is in our environment, in our regulatory environment, Everything you list as permitted is permitted and everything you don't list is not permitted. And that is just the way our laws have evolved. So uh, yes, you can't find anything that says uh, backyard hens are not permitted, but uh, that means they're not. <laughs> you know, that's just the way our law works. And so, uh, you know, that's how it would, uh, it would be handled by specifically allowing them under some circumstances. And that is also why every municipality does the piecemeal approach that Councillor Parslow is speaking against. Because if you allow backyard agriculture, you've gone overnight from allowing nothing to allowing pigs. Um, you must specifically permit each that you are permitting. And so the backyard hen is, uh, is a common, as noted in the presentation, it's common. Not so much up in our neck of the way, but certainly in the more populated urban areas, it's very common. Uh, it's very common to have fairly significant restrictions about lot size, which again were referenced in the presentation. It's very normal to um, limit them. Um, eight hens, by the way, would be the largest permitted number in the province. Uh, it's four to six hens uh, in all the bylaws that we've looked at. And this is not the first time councils contemplated this. This was contemplated 2007 or 2008, sometime around then. So we had a look at the bylaws uh, then. Um, now that is different so the normal thing would be if you wish to do this, you'd issue a direction for sample bylaw to come back, et cetera, permitting this and suspend enforcement in the meantime. Of the regulations that prohibit backyard hens, the problem with the particular situation uh, of Ms. Broberg is that she's built her coop uh, directly to property line. She is in the infringe, infringing setback area and we don't allow any structure in that. And that structure's gotta go, whether it's housing chickens or kids' bikes or whatever, it's just, uh, it's not safe or lawful under fire code. It's uh, your, your setback requirements don't permit it there. It has to be moved away from the setback area. Uh, but with that condition, then it could continue if you are putting uh, enforcement in advance. Uh, and of course, you're all familiar with our uh, bylaw uh, process, which is complaint driven. The complainants are anonymous. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same as a tow truck out front. If someone complains and we go and the tow truck is out front, then the complainant's out of the picture. We saw the tow truck, so it's the same with the chickens. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Schumann. So um, 
I think that uh, I would like to make a motion that uh, we look into allowing backyard hens. And I certainly do not want backyard pigs. Honestly, I don't. I don't want backyard pigs. And the idea of turkeys, have you ever raised turkeys, Councillor Parcel? My They're crazy is, animals. My <laughs> 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 They're crazy cool. birds. They're not like chickens. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I, would, I would move that we um, look into uh, updating our bylaw to um, facilitate backyard hens. I am very much in favor of backyard hens, not so much backyard roosters, even though they do sound lovely in the countryside, but, um, and that we suspend um, the bylaw in the meantime. I think it's a very progressive this thing to do. I think that uh, <clears throat> there's so many communities across BC that are doing it. We can look and find best practices. Don't roll your eyes at me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, let's get with the times and, and do this thing. It would Thank likely you. be a fair, I mean, this isn't going to be gotcha. by next council meeting because yeah. it's zoning change. You'll have to have a public hearing and a public engagement. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's that, um, that um, abeyance of enforcement is probably going to last the rest of the summer, basically. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Councillor McFadden, you're seconding that uh, motion? Out of tremendous respect and confidence in my colleague, I'd be happy to second the motion. Oh, Thank yes. you. <laughs> so we're moving forward with a, uh, to bring back, a, a directing administration to bring back a um, change to the zone, uh, bylaw that allows backyard hens and will suspend enforcement until such time as we receive that. And um, so that, just for clarity. Yeah, now that is, um, we can't do anything about the setback issue. That yeah. staff yeah, has yeah, no yeah. choice but to enforce that, yeah. so we'll work on that. Councillor Wilbur? That was my point. It was just that I believe the delegate then still has to move the chicken coop, coop. because. Yeah, it's but I understood her to say that she would be willing to do exactly. that. Exactly. So. Then the other question that came to mind is you said, um, do we have to set a number on the amount of chicken? Yes, chicken we'll do that. that. You no, know, you, you, we'll uh, you actually, um, because, um, because of the certainty issue that, again, the delegation brought up. Uh, you do have to define the number. We'll bring you a recommendation based on what's common. And um, uh, it's absolutely common that it's hens only. Um, and six seems to be the outside number, but maybe maybe I'll find something larger than that as I look. Well, I'll just duly note on, on and I can attest to this, as a mother of five children, eight hens would efficiently supply a, a family of five with eggs so I can attest to that on the delegation's <laughs> behalf <laughs> I'd be I'd be loath to say I was chicken to have more than six <laughs> oh. no it's no. early yeah. oh, no. No. well I would be pleased to support a, a motion that halts this matter in abeyance until we've come to some positive resolution but uh, and certainly um, I uh, support hens, but I, I, again, I, I would like to see us look at what other things might reasonably come along. I mean, obviously, we don't want, uh, in the confines of city lots, pigs. Uh, I'm sure that would be unacceptable. Although in many communities in the world, they do exist, as Be we all know. Bees would be nice, Councillor Parson. Uh, bees, bees might be, nice, be nice, but uh, what's wrong with some nice uh, game hens and who knows, pheasants and I don't know what. I'm just drawing back from my where I was brought up. Uh, so up. I was just wondering if we could um, have an amendment to the motion hens, be mm. specific, but staff to perhaps present another uh, a list of possible um, additions to this so we don't have another some requests uh, if I lived in town I I would certainly if this is enabled to have hens but I might want to have some uh, guinea hens or uh, things like that so and what, I think why can't we add to the list I think administration Jim's comment was we can put whatever we want in there but we got to be specific about that and so your comment is you want us to have administration have bring back others if, it, if there's other, other things kept in North America in we we can America. certainly have a look now in terms of your public hearings um, the CRISPR decision you're offering your citizens so uh, what if you have a citizen that would be happy to have hens but wouldn't be happy to have goats um, unless you're putting that to them each at a time one at a time you're going to get some blurring of the lines around that kind of a thing um, and you have um, as the delegation points out. You have more than one individual in town with hens in the backyard now. Yep. Um, and 
Uh, some neighbors are okay with that, and in the case of uh, the delegation, not. Um, but believe me, we get a quick call when there's a goat. Uh, <laughs> the, we have yet to find the neighborhood that seems to accommodate the goat. I have a goat in my neighborhood. Yes, I know. I got the calls. But listen, it was so much nicer to hear that little goat noise than the barking dog noise so, the other so we will bring it. So we will bring it back to council and... Uh, um, guided by that. Yeah, and, and I'm happy to amend it to yeah. look at other things as Charlie. Okay. Councillor Wilbur? Oh, I just wanted to, to make clarify then that staff will give direction to the delegation on the time period of moving that mm -hmm. chicken yeah. coop and the rangers. Well, meeting. we'll have to talk over what's reasonable for that. Okay. Councillor Malkinson? And uh, it's just enforcement of this uh, uh, non-existent chicken provision of the uh, zoning bylaw and animal control bylaw that won't be enforced over the summer, right? We're not throwing the whole, uh, what exactly we're putting them in abeyance over the summer, Jim? Chicken. The enforcement Chickens. of backyard chickens. Yes. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Yep. You're opposed? Yes. Do you want it recorded? Yes. Good. Uh, thank you. It's carried. So you're good with your hands. Don't give me that look, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> We're all and just you're all just glaring at me. <laughs> I want to, uh, back to Mayor's business, I want to get back on to the residential development committee. We had our very first meeting last week uh, on Thursday, as was indicated and mentioned earlier about our residential development committee. And, um, you know, I think it's obviously the amount of issues that come uh, and are going to come to our community that we are dealing with on a regular basis uh, as it relates to the development is, I think, unprecedented in terms of what's gonna, what you see going on. And so I, I was really encouraged by the meeting on Thursday with the level of participation by the residents and council and guided by our administration and the uh, folks that are helping us deliver that. And so I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna try and keep it on a tight timeline. So we're gonna meet every couple of weeks until we get it done and locked this fall and get it get it looked after and I think it's going to be a positive bit of work I want to tie that very closely right up behind that to item 9.4 was the meeting that Jim and I attended a week and a half ago in Grand Prairie with the uh, Mayor Bill Gibbon and his senior staff and how I just want to give you a little context because it come about I got invited about a month and a half ago to the Grand Prairie Regional College convocation ceremony and I thought it'd be good for us to demonstrate that we're good neighbors and I attended that and I was seated beside Mayor Given and I spent two and a half hours with him at that ceremony and you know we talked about I said part of the thing we're facing in our community is this development of our community industrial commercial residential and I said I'm sure that you guys having experienced that growth in your community over the last 25 or 30 years going from a community of 10 or 15,000 people up to 60 close to 60,000 today and how that density issue is really starting to uh, drive the things that are going on in our community and really difficult conversations and decisions for council and how we're, and he said, yeah, absolutely. We've, we've it was really, uh, they felt that over the years. And so we, st I took the opportunity to engage him and we set up a meeting uh, with Jim and I asked if it would be possible if I could bring administration over and meet with their senior planners to talk about that. We talked about uh, fees and charges. We talked about water and sewer and different things like that but primarily about the development and you know it was an interesting uh, conversation we had about two and a half or three hours with the mayor and uh, his senior planners and staff and as recent as the Wednesday night before we were there they were dealing with issues of zoning and residential development for suites in their community and it was amazing to me it was a a, a bit of a re revelation because you think you're going through this stuff and you you, you know you if you, if there was a magic bullet to it all that we could try to lock it down and and get it so we drive the development of our community so we understand how we guide it for the future and they're still dealing with it 25 and 30 years later of all the development they've had and so it was a very interesting two and a half, three hours, and we've committed that we're going to stay engaged with them. They're happy to uh, stay in that conversation and discussion and help us um, learn from some of the things that they've experienced in, in the growth of their community. They showed us a map 
two things. He showed us a map of their community as it's related to where and how their communities developed with suites over the years, as well as recently. And, um, and also a picture of a street, a neighborhood street, and it was garbage collection day. And if we think we have streets mm -hmm. clouded with vehicles and tough to get through and maneuver through, this one was unbelievable to me, and I don't know how the garbage truck, and it had a picture of the garbage truck coming through it. I don't know how it was gonna get through, and there was, so they talked about backway lanes and trying to make the lot smaller, put, put back lanes in and parking in the back, and all that did was had people, they don't plow them, they don't maintain them, so they green spaced them, and then people were parking out front, and trying to get affordability, so they made smaller lots and built them two stories, and, and they've tried everything, and they continue to have those issues that we, I think, now are identifying through our residential development committee around parking and garbage and snow removal and all that. It was very worthwhile. So, Jim, mm -hmm. I want to pass it over to you, and if you can give your thoughts on it. Actually, there was uh, several really um, insightful moments in that meeting. Um, one is just the understanding that um, the market, uh, developers, purchasers, um, they will move more quickly than your regulations. And to the extent that your regulations allow something that in retrospect you wish it, they hadn't, it may well be too late. Uh, Grand Prairie situation is uh, suites have developed over about 20 years in a pattern that they were all very comfortable with. And then the market has changed in the last couple of years in the same way we're seeing, uh, where there is such a demand for not just mortgage helpers, but actually uh, fourplex rental units uh, that um, a corner of their community has uh, built up in one year a uh, number of dwelling units that had taken them five or six years to get uh, it spread throughout the community. So uh, it affirmed, I think, for the mayor and I that what you're doing now, which is uh, bringing together this residential development community and making some conscious uh, choices about you know, what's acceptable to you as the look and feel of the community going forward um, are important. Uh, we also discovered, unknown to me, but uh, helps me understand the perspective of developers that come to our community from Alberta. In Alberta, uh, the regulation, the provincial act says, in any one zone, you can have a list of permitted uses, which is our situation. Anything that's in there, the property owner can do. And you can have discretionary. You can have other ones that can or cannot be approved at the discretion of council. Mm. Uh, we're not, we don't have that legislative tool, but for them, it's a very important tool because they can, um, they're not necessarily saying no, they're saying uh, with some conditions possibly yes. Uh, so that's, that was interesting for us. But uh, the biggest thing looking forward, as you may know, in Grand Prairie residential uh, snow plowing of residential streets, is an infrequent occurrence in the winter and when it happens there's a notice and all vehicles must come off for plowing. Uh, you can really see why they need that regulation uh, and also they have long since moved to where we believe we will end up with the roll-off garbage containers where the side tines on the truck, mm -hmm. garbage truck pull it up. Well, we, we will really need to address that issue through the Residential Development Committee because looking at, at um, uh, the pictures they showed us, it was simply impossible to accommodate all the vehicles that wished to park, plus all of the roll-off containers that had to be out that day, plus the garbage truck. Yeah. It just wasn't possible. It couldn't yeah. be fit in all in the same space. And, uh, you know, we've, we've not turned our mind to that, and now is the time to do that. <laughs> yeah, it was... Yes. Councillor Parzel? I'm glad Jim just raised that point. You, you raised it... Uh, Mayor at the uh, this residential committee. I just want to add to, a f to, to re-emphasize perhaps because some members of council have received some quite hostile phone calls over the this uh, some of these issues, um, and uh, this residential development committee is not just about secondary suites. It's about all the development issues that we're facing with, some of which uh, I, were, I was aware of and others I was not aware of. And this garbage pick curbside 
pickup and the whole sort of curb garbage uh, collection process um, is certainly as from my observations of the lower mainland is all this mechanical uh, side lift, I think it's side lift mm -hmm. generally, yes. Jim. and that goes for recycled as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how we could do it with the parking practices that we have in, in our community. Uh, mm -hmm. they, that, would ha that has to be dealt with first mm -hmm. before you can, because I think you, you made mention that it, future bids for garbage uh, waste management may well require this mechanical process uh, is that correct? It is, uh, through your worship, I believe that will be all we get. And I see how Grand Prairie is handling it. They are actually, it's almost like the neighborhood mailbox. Uh, you're, you have kind of a choice to either park in front of your place and roll your roll off all the way to the end of the block, or you cannot park and put your garbage cans out where there is room for the truck uh, to move, but it just, there's just no physical space to do both. And, um, you know, so f uh, for a um, suggestion like the developers today had where a laneway, which is short, uh, narrower than a roadway, is both the laneway for some properties and the front entrance for others, those are things that have to be worked through, have to be thought about. Um, it's, it's just um, uh, the world changes every day and government moves more slowly than that. And uh, it's just a constant series of catch-ups. That's what it is. So it was, honest to goodness, it was really, really beneficial, helpful. We're looking to continue to engage them. They're very willing to uh, help and mm -hmm. have any uh, time we wanted to uh, meet with them. They were good to do that. And I think there were some conversations and topics we talked about, fees and charges and things that we've done in the city that uh, Mayor Given locked onto right away and wanted to absolutely follow up with in terms of, so it was, you know, I think there was what obviously benefits to both. Benefits continuum and stuff like that? What's that? Our fees and charges po policy, the benefits continuum. You yeah, so yeah. we talked yeah. about that and <laughs> they were very interested in how we That's arrived on that and landed on that. Mm -hmm. Now there was two other comments that were made and I'll raise them. The uh, uh, mayor talked about they're putting 12 to $15 million into revitalizing their old decommissioned pool the leisure pool, um, now that they've got their new one open. The new Coke Center leisure pool, that whole complex yes. uh, was completed and opened last year to the $110 million. <coughs> I'll say that again, $110 million. And 12 to 15, they're gonna put in capital to renovating and bringing their old pool back to life. The 110 was not the Coke Center, it was the, the East, East Link, Link Center that yeah. is attached to it. Yeah. And then they're really looking hard at trying to get the Crystal Center renovated uh, in order to compete with the uh, Encanto Event Center, the Multiplex, mm -hmm. uh, for the shows and mm -hmm. events that we're currently uh, putting on that they don't have um, either the facility or the seating to compete with. At uh, uh, initial estimates of 40 to 50 million, yeah. and um, they don't know they've got they're going to have the borrowing power within the city to do all of the things that they've got. They're putting a t 10 million or 20 million extension to the runway. Yes. Mm -hmm. For uh, the benefit of Councillor McFadden. And they're looking to uh, hawk in a trip, a flight to Toronto, a uh, direct, as well as international or a sun uh, destination direct to Mexico or something. So they're, they're uh, investing some dough into uh, those big capital projects. And so the event center, their multi, uh, crystal center is a 40 to 50 million uh, projected cost. And so anyway. To renovate it to be equivalent to our center, which we paid 58.6 for the entire center plus an aquatic center plus an agroplex. About 50 million This is. Um, Renovation is um, always more expensive. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> and uh, we can office. talk about the Calvin Crook <laughs> Center if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> we will be shortly. Duncan will be up shortly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was, again, just, you know what? It was an open, honest well, kind of dialogue about what we're doing and how we're uh, developing. And um, so it was, it was very helpful. Well, it's good. You might want to offer advice uh, to the mayor of Fort St. John. I was with her at the Pemmican celebrations. And uh, <coughs> before they expend uh, $600,000 on garbage pickup, uh, bins that they might get ones that uh, would be appropriate in a few years time. Mm. Um, the 
Next item. Does anybody have any questions about that or comments about that? No, good, good, good job. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the economic development workshop we held about a week and a half, two weeks ago, with the BC economic development folks. Uh, it was really so. We brought in the economic development strategy as one of our strategic pri priorities for council this year. We hosted the um, invited the BC economic development uh, group, Dale Wielden and Bonnie. Colleen. Colleen. And anyway, we spent a day, uh, or a good part of a day with them. Uh, I thought it was very helpful in terms of giving us some focus in terms of some of those concepts we need to consider as we move forward with our uh, economic development uh, work. And uh, so I just wanted to update the community on that. Um, I we are obviously everyone's aware that Staff Sergeant McDonald uh, was transferred to Prince George and so that created a vacancy in our Staff Sergeant position. I spoke with Chief, Chief Superintendent Booth in Prince George and uh, asked about the vacancy and the process and uh, understood that the mayors now as part of our community partnership agreement with the RCMP are allowed to participate in the selection panel with the RCMP if we choose to. And so there was one lateral candidate that was uh, identified, and so the panel was put together, and um, with Superintendent Ray Noble from Grand Prairie and Inspector Terry Lake, Terry, not Lake, that's the Minister of Health. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Terry Wild. Lake. <laughs> Terry Wild, your worship. <laughs> Terry Wild. Anyway, we had the interviews on Thursday, and so it was really uh, a good process, and uh, so we'll see how that unfolds in the coming weeks when Chief Superintendent Booth uh, has been away having uh, hip surgery so he'll be back uh, into the fold sort shortly and a decision will be made on that and I just want to update council on that process that I did uh, ask that we wanted to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. And finally we have uh, the uh, United Steelworkers presentation from Sean Ball in regards to the uh, campaign to stop the killing and force the law. So that has to come back. Councillor Malkinson. I'd like us to, uh, well, it was a good presentation. The figures that were presented uh, um, were uh, surprising, I think. And I uh, have, uh, you know, read a little bit about uh, the um, uh, enforcement of that law um, over the past uh, 12 years. and. I think that uh, us uh, participating or uh, you know passing a resolution uh, endorsing the uh, principles that are enshrined in the law would be uh, uh, appropriate and forwarding it to um, the folks that uh, the uh, USW uh, mentioned. Um, yeah, I think that uh, we ought to pass a resolution endorsing that it. resolution recommended by the representative. Well, the the one was uh, that one was very specific. I'm just. Uh, I'm saying that we, uh, um, I, I would suggest rather that we uh, pass one that uh, endorses the, say that we endorse the principles of the, uh, of the law. The name escapes me for some reason right now. We, West, West, Ray. West Ray. West Ray. That we endorse the principles of the West Ray of law and that uh, we uh, encourage it to be uh, um, enforced uh, throughout the country. Thank you. Yeah. Seconded. Councillor Kenny. Discussion. Councillor Parzal? Yeah, I would support, uh, I had no problem with the suggested resolution, but I can support this as, w as well. Uh, I must admit that uh, we all are aware of industrial accidents mm -hmm. in this province that um, for various reasons, uh, which uh, are not appropriate probably to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, did not uh, f go through in their investigations to, to some charges and so on so I mm -hmm. find that might well be a bit to a flawed process uh, but I do think uh, we need to support this resolution because uh, it's appalling I, I just can't fathom that there's been even though as the presenter said many of these things are accidents genuine accidents uh, not all of them surely were and uh, you, I, I, I really think that the whole investigation process needs to be mm -hmm. looked at very, very carefully and thoroughly, yes. uh, both nationally and we also know through our own agencies in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. the, Thank you. The only difference that I wanted to draw between the resolution that's proposed or, you know, sort of having uh, 
you know, adhering to the principles that are in the uh, in the law rather than uh, the position of the USW. It's just the, uh, you know, the. How do I say it properly? Uh, the uh, stop the killing. It seems, uh, you know, to allege that uh, you know wrongdoing has taken place, and I don't think that's the city of Dawson Creek's position. I just think that we ought to. You know, the the basis and the principles in the law are sound, and I think that's what we ought to endorse rather than uh, some other body's uh, beliefs. Thank you, Councillor McFadden. Well, I'll try and be as uh, sensitive as I can, and. Uh, Tragically, when someone loses their life in the workplace, there is a police investigation, there's a coroner's investigation, probably a WCB or some sort of provincial regulatory body conducting uh, an investigation. And surely within that lot, if there was a criminal responsibility that something would be done about it. But I sort of get, and Mr. Ball can certainly correct me, that get the uh, inference that when tragically someone does lose their life in an accident or in a, in a work, work site, that somebody else has to go to jail. That's sort of the inference that I'm getting from this now. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I certainly hope I am. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Schumann. So that's what I thought at first, too. Like, I was thinking, oh, gosh, like, you know, what if one of our employees, something happened, like, is Jim going to jail? <laughs> You know, like. Well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to jail, right? Um, but I think in in um, the, the presentation, you know, where he spoke about the fact that lots of unfortunate accidents happen, and not all of them are a result of some sort of negligent criminal, da 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 da. Um, NBC, we WorkSafe would also yeah. would also be in there on that and. I get where you're coming from, but I'll support the motion. Thank you. Further conversation, discussion? You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. And that ends uh, Mayor's business. Diary? Calvin Crook, Center for the Arts. Oh, don't just come in. Schedule of Calvin. Good morning. Good morning, Duncan. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Duncan. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I would have won, though. <laughs> so it's a good right. thing. That's right. I thought you did that. <laughs> <laughs> you won. Yeah. Oh, I withdraw my comments. <laughs> <laughs> you can pay me if you want. <laughs> uh, Calvin Crook Center. So right now we're working on, uh, on two spheres. So we're working on getting occupancy from the fire department and the building inspection, uh, as well as substantial completion for Haggy. So... Uh, I was in the building last week with, uh, with the building inspectors and the fire department doing a walkthrough. And I mean, for all intent and purposes, the building, the look, it's done. It's completed, the carpets are in, it's painted, the bathrooms, the toilets, everything is in that building and the look is there. Now we're working on uh, just some of the, the interior, internal details, I guess. So we're uh, getting our fire alarm certification, getting our sprinkler system verification, uh, doing some some minor detail work that the building inspectors and the fire department have asked for, you know, some fire stopping where some pipes enter into a room, um, you know, a, a door stop here, or maybe the arm closes a little too fast on this storm, so or on this door. So we're really into the uh, into the details of the project, and we're really working through those those finite details. Um, also, getting some letters of assurance from the uh, architects and from the mechanical engineers on those systems. Um, but essentially, we're, we're very close. Uh, Haggy has a list uh, on the occupancy side that they're working on. Uh, they got it on Friday. We went through with the fire department on Thursday and the building inspectors. Mm -hmm. They're hoping to have that completed by this Friday, but it kind of counts on uh, or depends on their trades a little bit. Get the sprinkler verification, get the sprinkler guy back in, um, get the Chubb alarm system guy back in. Sometimes that can be a challenge. Uh, so they're really working on the details. We're hoping to have the architect back next week, at which point he would sign off and say he's happy to uh, submit for occupancy, and then it would come back to our fire department and our building inspector, and as long as we had completed the tasks that they've already looked at and identified, then we'd be moving forward with occupancy. So that's that, that sphere, and then the other is substantial completion, and uh, I mean, the, in short, there's a formula, but it's about 98%, so Heggy needs to have uh, built the city for 98% of their contract, at which point they can be given substantial completion. So Brett's coming up with that list, but again, it's 
you know, you need to put this light switch on here or mm -hmm. you need to put this cover on or this diffuser's off. It's, it's really into the, the details now. Uh, the biggest items being, you know, they're fencing the, the outside right now, the playground area. Uh, they're getting the trees and the shrubbery in, in that area and the, the topsoil. There's some stuff on the mechanical system that we're working through right now. Um, some deficiency work on, you know, lighting and patching and a little bit of paint here on a door that got scuffed or some carpet was dirty that needs to be steamed. Um, and then one of the other bigger items is the lead. Uh, we're currently sitting at 42 credits. We haven't submitted yet. 39 is gold. So we have a little bit of, of wiggle room on that, but uh, we're planning on submitting in August, at uh, which point we would uh, most likely hear back in November. They may request some more information. Uh, and then January, we should have a final uh, answer from, from the, the, the council on uh, where we fall with that. So um, looks pretty good at 42, but that can change. Uh, like I said, 39 is, is that low. Um, August 6th, we're going to meet with the user meetings. Terry Hannon's uh, scheduled that meeting. I'm going to attend just to answer any, as Jim noted earlier, the logistical questions, uh, as well as questions regarding the lease, because council and under staff recommendation, we've, we've put together that lease, and there may, may be questions around access to the building, and I'll be there to, to front those questions, and we'll stay there as long as we have to to get that, that sorted out, and any concerns brought forward at that time we can address. Uh, and then just the last, the last one is uh, um, we've had some different groups who are uh, scheduled to move into that building. Um, they've come forward and said, well, you know, we want to stay in our, our old building. In particular, received something from the Roots group last week saying, well, we want to we want to keep our old building at the NAR park. And I'm not sure um, if that means they want to move into the the Calvin Crook Center. There is a room there for them, the Historical Society room. It's about 3,000 square feet. It has the vault for the archives. It's all temperature controlled. It has a, a room for the um, for the roots group, and then it also has uh, abundance of space for the historical society and offices and photocopy rooms and whatnot. Um, and I'm I'm just wondering, and it's something to put out there. Maybe if uh, you know these groups have come forward, and and I'm not sure um, what the intent was originally that we would remove them from the buildings or they would leave the buildings they're in and move into the Calvin Crook Center. But I'm wondering if that's something council wants to engage with these groups on and uh, maybe have that discussion. Councillor Parswell? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Duncan. Uh, just for council's knowledge, I am meeting this afternoon uh, with the Historical Society at their request of me and uh, as the liaison. And I must confess, I'm not sure about the interface between the Roots group and the Archives group. Um, I'm not wishing to put staff on the spot, because uh, if you may not know, but I've always thought that the Roots group was separate from the Archives group. I was told on, f on Thursday or Friday last week from uh, a member of the Roots group that uh, they all sit on the Historical Society yes. board, but they act independently. The Roots and the Archives group mm -hmm. and the Historical Society act okay. independently. Okay, there, there are logistical, organizational, hierarchical, whatever else issues I'm sure that uh, will be, you know, plunged into this afternoon. But uh, I've, I've heard it, uh, my understanding from the, about the Roots group which I thought focused more on geneolo genealogy issues, um, was that uh, they had wanted to stay in the current facility, but that in no way impacted the removal, removal of the archives. But I will find out, because I, 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 I'm going to this meeting this afternoon. I'll ask those questions. Councillor Schumann? <coughs> well, Hearing now that Councillor Parcel is going to go get to the bottom of it, um, I'm not quite so, so. <laughs> freaked out by the fact that that huge space might that's not be used. specifically designed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is going to be vacant. That would really freak me out a lot. Jim? So, again, we'll um, I do on. think it might uh, be useful for Council to invite the Historical Society and all of its. Associated, associated bodies, bodies in to just talk this out with you. The, That's a good idea. Um, I mean, we're we're uh, 
this is not a dictatorship. No one can be forced to move into the Calvin Crook Center, but the taxpayers have paid a whack load of money for specialized space for the band, for specialized space for the archives, specialized space for roots. So I think it would be fairly reasonable for council to say, you're not required to move in here, but we are not supplying you with an alternate. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I don't know that it's good value for the taxpayers' money to build uh, room, climate controlled room specifically for the roots and then supply them another public building. I mean, this is, these are, um, you really want to know what their reason is for not wishing to make the move and it would have to be better than just we don't want to move. Councillor Schumer? Yeah. I sort of heard something the other day that made me think of maybe why they might not want to move. And um, I'm not sure what the historical society is paying in rent now at our old library building or whatever that is now, where they are. But from what I heard is they could actually pay a significant rental once they move into the Cape, into the Calvin Crux Center. And I mean, maybe that's what's playing into it. If there's going to be a significant, I mean, if they're getting zero rent over here and now they're going to be forking out 600 bucks a month or something crazy like that, I mean, I don't even know where these, these groups get their money from, if they have any revenue. Let's, we'll, et cetera, we'll, et we'll invite yeah, them in and For get instance, that. that would be a, a perfect topic of discussion for mm. council to have around, like, a, a rental structure, for instance. That's... Um, um, you would not want delicate artifacts in jeopardy because of an old and decrepit building they're in to fail because uh, people couldn't afford to move to the better alternative. I mean, that's the kind of thing yeah. council would w wish no, to absolutely. hash out with them. And probably it's better if you don't do that. Wouldn't say better, but we have observed uh, that with the historical society, many people contact us in the course of a day telling yeah. us they represent the historical society, yeah. and problematically they will be saying different things. Mm -hmm than the last person who contacted yeah, us yeah. saying they were, I'm, I'm not sure that they have much of a organized voting structure in the historical oh. society. Oh. They, they do, <laughs> they do have a, a very formal, well-run meeting, but that still doesn't stop people from fetter in any way the entrepreneurial spirit of <laughs> So they're similar to council is what you're saying. <laughs> But, but let's, let's not get confused, I think, because the historical society, certainly the archives and roots uh, membership attend the meetings, and I just don't know if they are all under the umbrella of the historical society. Yes. They oh. are? In their bylaws, roots and the archives have to be there for the historical society to be valid. Okay. The last point I was going to make, I think the roots thing should just be taken that I think the ease of meeting, just their meetings, is the thing that they liked at the NAR. That is no way, in my, from my ear, with, with these folks, has anything to do with the moving of the archives. We'll so get them in. We'll, we'll have that uh, understanding issue. through. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Duncan. I anything further? Oh, I'm oh, good. Oh, oh, any any so I just want to make sure, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Councillor Malkinson. No um, Regarding the uh, rainwater catchment system, are we going to be seeing something about uh, at the Calvin Crook Center? Are we going to be seeing something about that in the future? The uh, as far as you physically seeing it, or no, not not f forgive me. Um, I wasn't very clear there at all. I do remember leaks in the roof uh, um, of the daycare when we were there. Are we going to yes. be uh, seeing something supplementary about that in the future? Is it all? I think we already saw that. Didn't we? It's <laughs> it's it's been repaired. It's been uh, diagnosed. It was a controls. Uh, mm -hmm. Issue. It was two valves. There's a valve that um, allows the rainwater to bypass the tanks and run out into the, the storm. Yes. And there's a valve that allows it to run into the tanks, and both valves were closed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As a control, the computer told them both to close as default. You know, if something goes wrong, I want you both to close, which is not, not correct. So that yeah. has been corrected. And then it was just the sheer weight of the water in the pipe that caused yeah. the leak. Gotcha. Yeah, so that has been corrected there. Uh, the commissioning agent has been in. He's gone through that mechanical and is the controls operator as Perfect. well. Perfect. Thank you. Anything further for Duncan? You know, I just one quick thing, and it's not to do with Calvin Crook, and I'm going to ask a little. We, we, we won't have another meeting before the uh, fall fair, the grandstands. 
The grandstands, yes. Uh, so I just actually talked to all of Haggy this morning. They uh, went very hard last week and they've painted them. So mm. usually we leave uh, treated lumber at four seasons. Uh, we were doing moisture testing. It was at 11%. Manufacturer specs are 12. So the uh, the painters, two-stroke uh, painting, said that they would warranty it if it, uh, it peeled in order to get it painted before the fall fair. So awesome. painted uh, last week over the weekend. The nosing will go on over the course of this week. Um, but for all intent and purposes, they're they're ready for use. We'll have the building inspector look at them, provide them with the documentation, make sure they're satisfied. Mm, good. Councilor Schumer? Does our um, insurance people have to look at it too? Like the ones that flagged it in the first place, do they have to come back and do some sort of inspection? MIA, and uh, Jim, maybe you want to comment, but I believe it's just a... No, we'll send them the paperwork on it, uh, along with a number of other things they pointed out that we have worked on in the interim. Thank you. That, a great job, right? Great job because in January, February, when we were saying oh, oh, and time was of the essence in terms of getting that done for the end of July uh, for that uh, event coming up in August, I, great job. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's been everybody, the building inspectors, and also Sean and Kevin's department helping out with its strong team. So good job. Thank you, Duncan. I don't think we were saying oh, oh, I think we were saying. Yeah, well, there was other words, <laughs> other adjectives, but oh, oh, was the only one. It was camera friendly words. <laughs> yeah, camera friendly version. Uh, consent calendar. I move the consent calendar. Seconded. Well, Councillor Wilbur, all in favor? Opposed? Carry. Uh, strategic priorities. Uh, through your worship, a couple of things. Uh, your number one strategic priority, which was initiating work on the fiscal gap. Uh, we have um, ads out now uh, in traditional media and social media. Uh, we've specifically invited all the folks who participated in the um, fair share public engagement process. Uh, we're seeking members for the Fiscal Gap Steering Committee and anything you as councillors can do to promote applicants, that would be great. Uh, process is we'll gather all the applicants um, or all the applications bring them back to council with a recommendation on whether you need to um, winnow the number down or not and then it will be up to you to do that if you wish but at the moment we don't have enough applications to make that a reality so we, we could sure do with some more before the end of July and uh, I also believe item three can come off the chart this is the tender award and begin construction of the railway bypass trunk sewer all of that's mm. been done so. great thank you Question and answer? No one no Committee of the whole media question period. I had two. Um, the application uh, from Western Canadian Properties to uh, change its zoning regulation to allow for townhomes, what was uh, ultimately decided there? Uh, it was denied. Yeah, they, so, so there, the facility in uh, the uh, Crystal Center in Grand Prairie was originally constructed as a, an arena and an event center, but its uh, seating and its capacity to carry on uh, and deliver the types of shows and events that the Encana Event Center uh, hosts, they don't have the uh, capability to do that. Hosting uh, ho the, the structure of the facility, they can't hold the stages and the sound systems and all that stuff that this center the in Canada event center will and so they can't compete with the types of shows they attract with the in Canada event center at the crystal center and and it's um, and it's there's they don't they don't want to see that uh, flow of traffic coming west uh, from their community into the in Canada event center so they want to have a facility that can compete with it and so it's two things you have the facility and then you have the ability to attract the types of shows and events in and so that's where we've been very successful uh, at the Encana Event Center with Global Spectrum in terms of having the uh, shows and the world-class entertainment come to our community. Simply because you build a facility doesn't mean you're gonna get world-class entertainment that these guys have been able to do for us. 
And so it's a twofold question. The Crystal Center, the mayor indicated that they're looking at it's a 40 to $50 million expenditure in order to do the renovations to one, get the seating capacity up to that five or 6,000 seats, as well as to be able to host the types of shows and entertainment that we are. And to your knowledge, that 40 to $50 million expenditure, that was a renovation? So it's a renovation to their facility. It's a, and he used the term 40 to 50 million, and there's, they don't know that they've got the capacity to do it, right, and borrow that kind of money with all the other projects that they've got on. And then you also mentioned a dollar, dollar figure for similar upgrades to the Encana Center. Do you remember what that no, no. It was an upgrade that was construction? No, the construction of the Encana Event Center in, was about $58 million. 58.6 for the South Peace Community Multiplex, which yeah. includes the Encana Event Center. Yeah. And their reno is? 40. Almost as much as building up yeah. the building. <coughs> yeah, that's not Three buildings. Stone, that's just that's just their estimates right now in terms of what they've been uh, told. And we know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also compared to us building three buildings. Yeah, because we built the pool. Our cost includes the pool and the Lakota Center. <clears throat> that does it for me, thanks. That do it? Thank you. Any other questions for media? Thank you. Um, <sighs> move to closed. I move to leave. Move to close. I move to Councillor Mulkinson, Councillor Wilbur. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming today. Still awake?